Welcome back, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed your quick break to get, uh, you know, a cup of coffee, a cup of water, or maybe another drink right here. Here we go into the final set of the day. We have the NA Juggernaut. That is X9 versus Eternum. It's going to be a great time. Rocket with the demo Gorgon, like Mathis said earlier, a little bit of a change of pace. I love watching demo sets. I'm a big fan, so I'm so excited to, to see what these survivors and these killers have in store for us for set number two of our little block today. And now that it's also especially Rocket playing one of the more famous Demogorgon players, he's already been always been able to pull out quite the astounding results on this killer. He's got plenty of experience. One of the very few Europeans to play like their Russian. Just an absolute 1v1 god that Rocket is absolutely known for. As he's already using the portal very early into the game. This is also one thing that I also always find quite interesting to see with Demogorgon players, because some of them just completely abandon ability that they have besides just treading they don't even use pauses but we already see rocket putting them to great effect he's built up quite a nice line conga line here in the middle of portals to, gonna use it to probably try to get into the middle of the map and then also to the other sides of the map because this map has got quite the good three gen potential with a fantastic snipe by rocket very well deserved on jar because he's the only one who's not rocking the team tag my guys the odd one out so this is just payback for the team now that rocket is exerting onto our renato player and the snipe comes through once more rocket will be able to land two snipes the shred onto our man in green and that's going to be the first down off trial before a gen even pops yeah, great pacing right there. Great yeah. showing right there from Rocket. Going to opt to get a little bit greedy. Maybe confirm yeah. this pain res. Can you hit all your great skill checks and get the wiggle off in time? You are not, and that's going to be the first pain res right there. Like you said, before the first gen even pops. Rocket, great stuff right there. Going to find yet another shred right here. But not going to actually get the hit right there. That is a lot of distance made. You got to think that potentially could have been the light play right there. Going to get the gen break right here with the pop value for sure. Yeah, I mean, Rocket's playing is pretty pretty cut and dry pretty perfectly gets the hit onto wispy oh are we gonna find the tunnel out yes we are can you get this hit onto jaw or oh that's so scary though i was about to say the long the long shred right oh. there and on the corners is so scary to oh. deal with rockets the creative pathing that's what they call it the rocket pathing not this one he's also got it on the killer side it's gonna be the second down onto jar and also He's got quite a spicy fallen on that side, but I do believe they've finally taken care of it. I was going to say, I would be quite surprised if they hadn't finally gone for it. As you're also seeing the, the beautiful spectator mug back in action. But let, us, that, that, let that not distract us as we go back to Wispy POD. They're resetting in the corner. Wispy one that went for the, re, for the save earlier. And should be a clean 3-gen, 3-gen split on each side of the map. So Rocket, it's now his turn to make his decision on what side he wants to craft it or keep it on, rather. And it's probably going to be the one where Jar is already hooked. There's no real point for him any longer to go to the other map. So if he manages to get the Sorkey on one, if it goes well for him, then that would force our killer of X9 to go for a Sorkey on two. Which would enforce a completely different playstyle or just extreme luck with an unbreakable forgen. But if that's usually not gonna happen, Demo Gorgon, a very standard M1 killer with a very strong face ability. The firecracker is not going to help much. Wispy will trade for Jar on the hook, is going to remain down. Rocket was able to get the two tap quickly, but the firecracker was just enough to distract from Jar, it seems like, as a Rocket was look up and see so yeah, where it was way went as soon as he was animation locked by the shred onto wispy yeah oh, definitely yes. oh no that's rather unfortunate yeah you, you had to think wait a minute not the early fall <laughs> gotta look behind you just a little bit if your job rather unfortunate that trade that wispy was going for is going to be off or not as you know you just confirm a second fresh hook and you confirm the death on the jaw right here three gens left going to have to make some big plays right here to make up for lost ground if anyone can do it it's definitely the na giants now that is uh x9 right here can we find something right here gets the spread onto ace no no one home for it great evasion gets the corner right there going to opt to rotate to a different side maybe to create some more pressure onto these generators has the portal just in case he needs to make that 
quick return to the top side of the map because like you said earlier we saw that conga line of, of portals down the middle of the <laughs> map so you do have some mobility there maybe to cut some people off but you also need to put some you know some portals near these generators which it looks like you know rocket is intent on doing gonna get the shred right there to maybe confirm this second down onto wispy can wispy outlast long enough to buy some time for his teammates right here gonna opt to go for the window no great stuff interesting pathing right down the tl gonna get that right there can you get the double back that's gonna be the down boom and as wispy goes down that is going to be another point for rocket if he does decide to pick up no he's going to find another survivor in the corner it's going to be haunt first time being found this trial rocket immediately goes for the intimidation with the thread. Oh, I'm gonna psych, I'm gonna psych. No, I'm actually just going to zone you. Haha, <laughs> psych. And he's gonna be able to land the shred regardless onto Horn with the add ons. That's also, of course, going to help him cover a tiny bit quicker. Also, to everybody in chat watching, if any one of you can edit, and if you, if you don't want to do it, I'll do it myself with the. As soon as we saw Dar vaulting into Shaq and with Rocket's ability holding, that's a perfect, that's perfect opportunity to install that old JoJo meme with the to be continued, where it just slows down or just basically stops. Because that's just such a perfect play. There's just this Dar fast vaulting right into Rocket's open, loving arms, loving embrace of the Demogorgon, with the arms spread out. But yeah, that's Jar dead on the hook with Wispy at second stage. Five stages on the board. Kian in the haunt in Shaq. Now let's look. Oh yes, Russia, uh, Russian Rocket going for the mine for the classic mind game. Faking to go into Shaq and then going around hoping that Haunt is going to be greedy for the window. But instead just skips right to the next upcoming tile. The God Filler that Rocket likes to call it as well against Doctor. Because that is quite frankly it. It's so, so powerful against Doctor. There's so much to do on it. But yeah, back to, back to, snap back to reality, we're spectating Demogorgon. Vistus being the next one in chase here, not surprised that, oh, it's not, it's not Vistus, it's Wispy instead. Not surprised that Rocket goes for him here, since this would be the second death of the tribe, and three generators already remaining. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what Rocket's looking to do. Optimal plays right there from one of the European 1v1 gods, as we like to call him for sure. Gonna get the vault right here. Oh, but a little bit careful right there. Nice mind game right there. Loses the 50-50 buying just a couple bit of seconds. Can we get some pressure from the other x line survivors? So while this chase is happening, he's making it work. Bloodlust tier 3, though. That has to be the down, and finally we see it. That's going to be it for Wispy right there. Do we get some pressure? We are going to get that Resilience Valley onto this generator to get a quick pop right there. Uh, that's two dead survivors with two gens remaining. This is where the War of Attrition truly begins. Can you guys split up and stealth enough to maybe at least get another gen done? Or are we going to get the 2k at 2? I don't think our survivors will be able to get much out of this game now. We've got only two men standing at two generators remaining. I don't think they'll be able to pop another den, even though we've got this completely isolated specimen in the corner with the three den up top on main, uh, surrounding main building. Scratch marks are already, already revealed, but there's no blood, blood stains nearby on the ground, so it is going to be Vistuis. Uh, the ice player in the corner does have the life available, might be able to get some value out of it on the crane, but no, Rocket is going to land the snipe off with the shred around the crane, and it is going to get right on the back of Vistris. He's not going to be able to make it much further. He has no opportunity to use life. Beautiful crouch deck here. We'll be able to crouch right underneath that arm and does it for a second time. A block it with a perfect body block on the pallet regardless. It does seem like they outside us might. Oh no, it's going to be painless if he's lucky. Yeah, it's looking like that's most likely going to be a pain res right there. Great crouch decks right there from the yep. X-Line survivors. That is going to be the pain res indeed. Now again, these portals that he placed early on, are you going to get some value out of them? It looks like Rocket will indeed. Can you find that pressure onto Han? Did Han rotate er the Hunt rotate early or are they stealthing out? That's exactly what's going on right here. Can can they make something happen? This looks all but inevitable to be a 4K left at two gens remaining. Yeah, it's either going to be the 4K or the uh, very fortunate half to stay, but I don't think that Rocket is going to blunder that at all. He's going to be on that very swiftly. Just using the portals already, he will easily be able to body block this hatch and then get to the gates as well. 
it's considering he's already set up so many portals all around the map. So this setup is going to come in clutch here for our Demogorgon player as Vistus slowly passes away on the hook. He's still got another 70 seconds if he doesn't let go in the second stage. But there is just absolutely no way that Haunt manages to get the save here. This is where this map or the, 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 the formation of the map comes in so strongly because it's sort of got this bottleneck in the middle that Rocket can sort of just stand in. And then he can just look down horizontally and he sees the other side of the wall. So there is absolutely no shot a survivor can realistically sneak past. That's something that we first saw with Plague, I believe, one or two years ago. With, uh, first person I've ever seen you using uh, taking advantage of that was Zarkus Plague. This time, yeah, Rocket will be watching Horn being sacrificed in the distance as he's already standing. Put cocked and ready with his feet on the ground, ready, waiting eagerly to stomp out the hatch. As we see Hod ready right next to the, uh, one of the gates and he's going to be medium walking around the corner to hide using that adrenaline. We see the teleport coming but Hod is not yet ready to get onto this gate. He's waiting for Rocket to waste a bit more time trying to still find some sort of opening here as Rocket is uh, walking around now. Nominal spectator buck as well. He's st apparently he's still in the tunnels. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like the it's like Xenomorph where you can constantly go through all the tunnels, right? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know that I didn't know that we added that we added that um that that was a new patch. New patch just dropped. I d I didn't know. Competitive competitive edition. That's crazy. But you know yeah, this is uh, the, yeah, that's like the three second shred or however long it is, right? Yep. Wherever you you get a little bit of progress. That way, when they do commit to the other side of the gate, you don't see that first light blink. So you might actually be able to cheese the escape right there. But yeah, that's going to be so interesting now. I think we might just have to stick with uh, Haunt's point of view right here. Going to get the gate right here. Oh, so close. But you know, you that's know, QVs or Red Block so there's a surprise coming in for you right there, and there it is, the Noed. No one escapes death. Rocket set that with their chest. Gonna get the 4K here. At, man, that was a, what a statement. What a great first uh, first go around right now from uh, Eternum, from Rocket on this demo oh. again. <laughs> I just saw that in the background as Horn was being sacrificed. Oh, look, you could actually see it. <laughs> the portal POV on surrounding his head. So yeah, it was like as if he had like a black astronaut helmet on. That looked for absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, this should speak volumes for itself. Rocket did not even the know it to be able to 4K at <laughs> such still with generators remaining. Also, that is a huge result for our Demogorgon player, considering. Usually Demogorgon is just treated as just another M1 killer that has the ability has a stronger chase ability in his repertoire. But that is a huge result for Rocket, and I can't wait to see what our team X9 has to has as their response in the upcoming in their upcoming killer trial in the rematch. But uh, let us hear a third perspective on it. Rats, uh, what do you have to add for the trial that we've just watched? Demo, 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 demo. This has been the third trial of demo that we've seen this weekend, or at least today. I'm not sure if they have seen a demo yesterday. And oh boy, all of them so far have been running the exact same loadout from every single perk to the add-ons. At least for today, as I said. Um, I mean, for the playstyle, it's been very much the same also, like very similar, trying to get a tunnel out and if it doesn't work out, go for stages with pain rest, but essentially getting the pop uh, value and the know it, securing the lot of like the stages at the end. Um, it worked out for, for Rocket. If I do say so myself, Rocket is a very, very dangerous demo and I don't, I don't want to even go against that when I'm playing on ping. Uh, it's already <laughs> scary enough if I'm on my own ping going against Rocket's demo. That's uh, very much uh, difficult to chase. And But we don't want to underestimate what X9 has to offer with, I believe it's Wispy taking the killable for them. Yeah. So we will see what Wispy has to offer if they're going to be running the same build with the same playstyle or if they're going to be cooking up something different that we haven't seen before. Remember, they have locked in their pillar perk before they played Survivor, so... They must have been comfortable with that choice of their perks before they played Survivor. Um, we will see what they we will have to what they'll have to offer for us here. Maybe see something different. Maybe we see something very similar. Um, I'm excited to see it. 
remember I, 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 will, I also want to like say that all the time because remember this is two matchups that are played on ping. It's an a, NA East versus EU. So yeah, if people are voting into <laughs> you, for example, on main building, that can happen because you kind of have to vote a bit more early, right? It I looked know, really bad. Yeah, it looked really bad. I was like, that was <laughs> a misplay and a half. But yeah, like you said, to, the to ping. their defense, it's them. Yeah, we can have to vote early. That's NA West versus Portugal. I don't yeah. blame them. Things can happen, and and here's a scary demo. So. We'll see how this is going to turn out. I'm excited to see. Ping. We have, again, very strong survivors on, on the roster. Same for X9, but we also have a scary demo, too. Mm. Yeah, I was, about, I was about to say also, like, you know, um, from watching X9 play, especially, like, in the Hens tournament, for example, like, Wispy is, like, the workhorse of this team. Like, Wispy is playing Survivor and then going back and immediately playing Killer right after almost every single game so you know if anyone has full control over these results and can really lock it down for x9 it is wispy like that grand finals match against uh, uh elysium in that tournament wispy look wispy at various moments looked like the best dvd player on the planet so if he can if they can lock in and make it happen for x9 that could be just a complete turnaround in results however like you said very strong survivors on the side as well you have the that 1v1 god rocket also so you know wispy you know that's gonna be a matchup that you know can make or break this result on the demogorgon for sure if i do make a prediction here as in how this game is gonna turn out is i assume that we're gonna see somebody getting killed and then just straight up tunneled not uh, like ignoring anything else trying like obviously taking the hit tanks but with the m2 obviously but trying to get somebody out of the game as soon as physically possible and then maybe we'll see a tie i don't see x9 winning the set from this perspective maybe they tie it maybe they play for a tie for 4k2 again to um play for the another demo set like you know doing a rewind on it but yeah. um i don't see x9 winning this from this perspective but they definitely might pull out a tie here depending on how this game is going to go. However, 4K2 is still a rough, of a ta like a really rough task to achieve. It's still just, I say just, because Dem was a very strong killer in, in chase, but it's still physically just an M1 killer with a good chase ability and some mobility. So we'll see how this is going to turn out. Um, but I expect somebody to very much get uh, tunneled and not left alone. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, that 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 uh, point that you're making makes total sense just because of the fact that, like you said, 4K2 is such a difficult result to get. And one of the ways to at least get the tie is you do have to get someone out rather quickly, almost immediately, like you said, going to end up tunneling for sure. Uh, now, that the question is, are we going to see are we going to see the body box? Or are we going to see them prioritize generators instead? Right. Because those are completely different play styles we've seen. Right. Like we've seen we've seen teams play with play styles that are very like altruistic, taking hits trying to make enough distance for whoever's being tunneled to get away from danger but you also see some teams very adamant letting someone go to second for the sake of getting one two three gens pop so that's definitely going to be uh, a lot of questions that are going to be answered right now very very shortly but yeah like you said uh predictions like you said uh x9 can they get this result i mean like you said it's it's difficult to get a 4k2 so we either probably see the tie or we see the win onto a tournament for this game number one but yeah i'm we're getting ready started we're already connecting to the lobby it's gonna be a great time rats the go as always thanks again matt this i'm so ready are you oh absolutely this is going to be one heck of a ride considering eternum also have quite the strong survivor roster there are some notable names among these players Especially the the French goat Daimao. Can't forget about our precious Ace Man. Been... I've played personally a lot with him in the past, especially on Ubo as well. That team went on for basically a year, and he's been one of my best friends when it comes to when it comes to playing to come together as well. So I'm expecting much here, but as I know him, <laughs> Daimao, come on, don't throw again. <laughs> Nah, I've got high, I've got high hopes for this team now as well. We'll see as we've now successfully alerted into the trial Wispy on the killer. And we also have to take into consideration this is still Eternum's pick. So they ended up picking uh picking the Demogorgon set, and the next one we will be loading into X9's pick, which I'm going to have 
a word about also later as soon as we're ready onto loading into that game. Let's for now focus on this Demogorgon trial. Also already setting up the portals as we see. Quite powerful to lock down, uh, quite smart also to lock down these individual sides of the map. You also, Wispy does not have a central gen just like Rocket did. It's got a four to three split on either side. We've got three gens on Shaq with the that are completely blocked by the crop dimension and then four generators left completely open by that perk on the other side of the map here. So Wispy expecting to have at least three so three or four survivors, but probably all survivors to spawn on the side, considering Corrupt is usually a dead giveaway of where the survivors are. And it is, as I predict, that's going to be Daimao. First one in chase, sacrificing two pallets right from the get-go. And all that he has left now is the TL. He's going to be forced to play the 50-50. Does he have a life? He's not going for the window yet. <laughs> Wispy ready to the ability. And wow, Daimao, didn't know you moved to the US. He's just been able to avoid that hit somehow. Wispy does not draw first blood just yet. Perfect vault by Daimao. Set up the vault perfectly. Wispy is now forced to traverse to the other side of the map and go for rockets. So from one... Oh, yeah, there we go. What? That's what I was waiting for. That's what, what I was waiting for. <laughs> What? We saw like a zero ping vault and the swing of miss, <laughs> and then we see that? We yeah. see that interaction? That is actually That's crazy. Uh, who got the VPN on? Who got the VPN? Who, who's lag switching, man? <laughs> so, someone check the, check the network, man. Rocket, though, probably gonna go down. Unfortunately, not gonna be able to make that window on that four lane. Gets the down right here, bringing in, yeah. uh, you know, that's going to be a painter's right there. And obviously, like you said, rather unfortunate gen spawn. Obviously, needs to needs to try to get a hook into the four gen area. That way, you have as mu you have more pressure, right? Because if you keep playing on the bottom side, I thought that was going to be a hit tank to try to get the try to get the wiggle. Yeah. That would have been wild. <laughs> uh, you know, people say that DVD isn't a scary game, but I am very certain that Rocket just got completely jump scared in that corner and lost all, all focus as soon as he got hit there. Also, a beautiful pallet stun here by Soleil. Man, it just does stun Wispy mid shred. But this is, of course, this is not the only time we can talk about things because in the previous game we had Rocket go against an NA West survivor. So, whatever Vistra's had to see in that troll is definitely worse than what Rocket has had to go through. So, some sort of karma, redemption coming in here that Wispy has been able to put out. And there's already two stages on our Geo Rocket. Five yeah, I generators mean, remaining. I mean, look, Rats made a prediction earlier, and so far the prediction is coming true. He said, he said whoever's going down first is going to get hard tunnel. That's exactly what happened right there. Rocket already on the death hook. Might even be able to secure this kill, but are we going to see, you know, the commitment uh, onto this, uh, confirming this death, or are we going to see potentially chase, uh, chasing off gens just to create a little bit more pressure right here? We see someone break through, trying to get this trade potentially. That looks like he might make it in time, and that's exactly what it's gonna happen. Rocket able to make it. Can you get the down? And can you get the tunnel out right here? It's gonna be a lot of value right here. Two survivors out of commission. Rocket gonna have to. I'm surprised Rocket didn't take that window. That's actually insane. Is that the BT hit? Oh no, it just ran out. It just ran out probably. Oh. I am very confused about this gen pressure also. We've only seen one gen pop. That's one survivor dead and an inbound yeah. further fourth stage onto Sile also. Yeah. This is nothing compared, uh, they, they did actually manage to get him back up, but this is nothing compared to the pace that X, that X9 had on the survival side in the previous trial. And Rocket was still able to showcase it early on. The, is that the light coming in clutch right there onto Dimeout? Yes. That's crazy. Just buying a little bit more time. Gonna be able to make it through, but now, you know, you kind of have to just pick your poison right here because, again, everyone's fresh, so, you know, you either commit to potentially chasing people off gens, not before you get that kick onto the generator with Pop Goes the Weasel. Get a little bit of gem progress back for you if you're wispy. But, yeah, the pacing of this, this looks to be potentially something that can be doable potentially here, but we're gonna have to see wispy going to end up making it to that bottom side of the map. Maybe try to find a survivor lacking right here but you know that their call outs are on point right here nothing here no one home at shack so this is going to be uh potentially a little bit of a time waste if you can't find anyone here on this region side and wispy still also has this three stacks of pain rest plus pop in the back pocket so there's much pen regression left to be exerted 
by Wispy. So there's still so much that could potentially happen. Sillet will be the next one in chase. Only has this now extremely unsafe boss palette as it's been nerfed. Sometimes you get this variation, sometimes you still get the old one. But our survivors part of Eternum were unfortunate enough to get this variation. Sillet will bite the dust very quickly and this could potentially be it. Oh, this is going to be very, very close. No great school tech hit. Is this going to be the pain race? Oh my god, it is going to be it! <laughs> that was... Tech. That was so close. That's so unfortunate. Again, those pain res hits is why this perk is so strong. Able to, you know, just deny the generator being completed, deny the pressure that these survivors are working so hard for. And now Wispy out here trying to find maybe someone setting up for a save. But again, no one home. Can you find something though? The pacing is not too bad, Matt. This. Yeah, with four stages in, four generators remaining, but then finally does pop, but that was a huge waste of time that Wispy was able to create. Sele is, at the moment, also being camped. Seems like Wispy is trying to go for the Yokart approach for things, also going for the, <laughs> going for the two tunnel out and ignoring all the other individual stages, but currently he is in a position to very well do so. Yeah, absolutely. Again, like 4K2, maybe potentially, uh, you know, again, the predictions. Uh, this is why this is why we put Rats as an analyst, because all the, all the predictions are on point. Like you said, 4K2 is a really, really hard, uh, um, you know, win condition, right, to, to even beat out. Because at this point, you just do a gen and, and boom, it's tied right there, just like that. And now you have to play for the 4K immediately. As soon as there's extra pressure right here, that's going to be it right there, man. This is... Uh, you know, it was looking not too bad. I mean, Wispy was able to get Rocket out early, but you know, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta wait right here and see what um what the result potentially could be. Man, this is uh this is something right here. The problem is, is that that gen is by itself, uh, closer toward the middle, but on that top side of the map. And you have to think, or if they're working on that, that's gonna be really tough. Yeah, currently it is quite impressive how our uh, survivors from Team Eternal were able to turn this around. They still got much more generators cut than currently we are sitting on the play condition. Fitz is going to trade for Sile, and it seems like that Sile will be able to make it to another floor. So this deal will not be as fortunate as he was. Very quick rocket tunnel out at the start of the game. Goes for the snipe, but Sile goes for the... Oh, somehow doesn't get the medium ball. That was interesting. I'm pretty sure he probably just hesitated a bit on it. But no, doesn't get down there. That is going to be huge. Spitz is picked up in the meantime. They've oh, and another one comes in the crowd back and the Z. Oh the no, way. there's no way. Sele, oh my god, manages to get another vault though now, but is unfortunately no longer in position to get a fast one on the Z wall. So that is going to be Wispy just holding W and securing the down onto Sele. With Spitz and Daimal both yield in the meantime, but they still need to get another another gen pop if they want to win this. Wait a minute. Uh, that hook looks really far. That hook looked really far. It's going to be really close. It's going to be really close. You're going to get your oh. no! Then you hook and Wispy losing everything. Had one person down, potentially could have avoided the tunnel out, just get another pain rest hook. But now, not having any hooks, only one death, and still two stacks of pain res. And you gotta think that Spitz and Daimao made it to that top side of the map to work on that gen. That's exactly what's happening at Daimao. <laughs> taking a hit right as we had the uh, field of view, the point of view change right there. Uh, but now it's going to be a matter of can you get this second gen, this third fortune done actually. Yeah, it seems like Spitz has just enough time to get this generator popping though soon. We they, they only need one more generator to fly since Rocket's performance was so unbelievably good in the previous trial. But it does make sense as this was also a Turnum's pick. And most players or most viewers also know by now how good Rocket is on the Demogorgon. But Wispy is absolutely not going down without a fight. Spitz will not be able to dodge as successfully as Spitz did previously in that place in the corner on the Z-Wall. Yeah, we got our survivor. That was our gym jockey throughout the trial. Now in chase also will our efficient survivor be able to turn it around. Does manage to get the crouch and dodges the attack for now. Manages to get one board, but the second one is not going to happen in time. And I can imagine both of our indoor survivors are probably just doubling up on a generator. There and they get it in time. There it is. Yeah, I was going to say this. This That was a pain rest hook too. Oh, it was so close.
literally that crouch deck could have been the difference maker right there from Spitz on that on that tile right there. That one crouch deck could have potentially been the difference maker to at least delay that fourth generator being completed. And now that yeah, that's crazy. That, it's so unfortunate. Wispy was doing so well and had a pretty good position. And unfortunately, you know, not able to get the best hook RNG, especially from that corner right there. Daimal will be the next one in choice, but they've already been able to meet the wind condition. Daimal doesn't even bother dropping a pallet there. Uh, he's, gonna, he's gonna drop it after being hit to waste a little bit more time. Doesn't want to risk being hit and then the pallet break also coming through at the same time. We don't see the balance land in Daimal. Doesn't even have this question, but he did catch the one corner where he don't catch the stagger. Also, one thing we never talked about is the utilization of forced hesitation that Wispy is bringing into that I'm being yelled at from behind the scenes by, by our staff team. Most most importantly by rats also. He's out that this perk is coming in club hugely, which I didn't even realize, but if you take into consider consideration trades, now that all these survivors are already on ping, trades are much more difficult pull off as it takes a bit there's always a bit of delay you're stuck in the animation and in, in the animation for a bit longer as the ping has to sort of recover uh getting a snapping out of the animation lock and then false hesitation also coming in the moment the survivor is downed the survivor that's then unhooked will go down or hindered for quite a tremendous amount for also a very long duration for 10 seconds it is so that survivor that's then unhooked or that 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 uh, Wispy's object of obsession is the one that you want to be tunneled out doesn't make it as far, which we saw with Rocket at the start of the trial when you wanted to vault the window, but didn't make it there in time or wasn't fast enough. Hindered, so he couldn't make it and couldn't make the vault, and that actually made the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Those very nuanced perks, especially, you know, one of the more newer perks, obviously, maybe from two killers ago, uh, definitely going to potentially do uh, something that, you know, or three killers ago, I mean, sorry, for hesitation, uh, you know, a lot of nuance behind these perks. And it's really interesting to see with like the balancing team and ending up, you know, creating uh, pathways to use certain different perks as well. And like you said, that uh, the latency factor is also something to know for sure. Are we going to get this hit though on time mount? No, we're not. Not gonna able to last a little bit longer and again oh my god that that's the that's the that's the naeu that we're that we're expecting to see in terms of uh interactions right yeah ironically enough that's also the exact same palette that rocket got demolished on at the start of the trial the one in the corner that he was hit pointing through seems like wispy's got a thing for this palette in the corner and just hitting survivors through it it's it's a perfect match <laughs> getting po completely focused on the corner and this palette in the corner it's, it's, uh, Daimao has just had his own taste as Rocket was also served at the start of the trial. And yeah, our survivors are also just going for this as well, as you were, as you also pointed it out in one of the previous trials. The War of Attrition is what we've got going on here. They're trying to scramble any last resource they have left available. Spitz also just running corner, Wispy readying up the ability. But that's of course never going to hit. Spitz is going to die right in the corner. And we already saw Sile wiggle out in that exact position because this hook right here that Wispy is now going through has already been broken and the one that's closest is next to Shaq. So he realistically doesn't make it there in time for the wiggle out. And this generator has also gotten quite close. Wispy expecting a survivor to be hiding around the corner, but we didn't see any sparks flying. So no survivor is currently working on it. Wispy is swatting flies at this point. Yeah, no one home for that right there. Definitely thought someone was right. Someone has to be around potentially right here too. So, you know, just because that gen progress has been, you know, has been increasing for sure. But now there's the pickup on the, on the spits, like you said, that there's no, there's no hook near that corner. So, you know, Wispy just cutting his losses and just, you know, deciding to, you know, maybe go pressure someone else instead. Uh, here we go. Can you find someone else though? You're just going to let this regress. Going to check the lockers potentially. Wispy is so convinced that someone's still around here. And all of them are already healed. <laughs> they really do not, they really want to show off here and go out with a bang in this first set to really send a message over to X9. You might have won the big, the last, the, the latest biggest tournament, but we are here to fight and you're not, we are not going down easy. In fact, it's you who will be going down as all three survivors are completely healed and there's only one generator left with no three gen whatsoever inside. How how did that not hit? <laughs> I I am ninety nine percent sure. Well, it's obvious. It's obviously because Demogorgon is still an Ados Ados jacket got the same color, so therefore it's not very effective. 
You know, I'm gonna tell you right now, Demogorgon went out there and said, Ma'am, can I take your jacket real quick? And just is trying to go for that <laughs> instead of the actual hit. But Spitz, <laughs> Spitz ended up making it all the way up right there. Unfortunate, not gonna actually get. Uh, that would have been potentially, you know, uh, maybe a zone out right there onto that corner of the map as well. However, now we go back to the gen progress right here. And uh, we're just waiting around, kind of trying to find something potentially here. Daimao being chased. There's two gens that have a ton of pressure right there. Maybe try to walk through in case there was a double back mind game right there. Not going to end up going for it right here. That's going to be a teleport oh. to the other side. Back towards Shaq's side where Spitz has to be right now. Working on that generator. You saw how they immediately left the Shaq right. Potentially trying to reach that window right here. You know, that's a spectator bug I want to see more of. That actually granted us such clear line of sight on everything that was going on as our survivors of Team Eternal were able to pop the lightest gen the last generator finally really putting the nail into the coffin as well as you've the same idiom that you've used earlier as well and it's this uh, yeah th there we go that's the red blood cell pov that's the bug i don't want to see again but as soon as long as that teleport is clear that's awesome and we're already seeing it spits our notorious gen jockey from earlier already on the exit gate and that's at least one survivor escaping but as we know rocket with his 4k on two generators remaining, really showing off why they picked this Demogorgon set to be the starter between... Oh yeah, there we go, we've got the POV again. Oh, just red. <laughs> yeah, got the POV right there again, gonna end up getting the Nerd switch. on but my like... mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you said though, you know, that is gonna be it for set one. You know, the, the win con was met quite some time ago. So while we are waiting for uh, this end game collapse to happen, let's talk about the next two killers that we could potentially see. So that this was a, a tournament pick, X9's pick has to be the Oni, right, for game number two. And mm -hmm. if we do see the, the tiebreaker set, we go to Singularity, which, again, a tournament's pick, potentially, but X9 also very strong with the with oh, uh, the Singularity as well. But we're going to find the chase right here. We're going to see that after this. Can we get the escape? Can't, yeah, can Spitz make it back to the body block? Oh, oh, no. It's going to be the down. Oh, Force hesitation. <laughs> nah, it's not going to be enough. Oh, we see the value. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Face planted right into the stone wall there. That's going to so, oh, that's going to solidify the two-man escape, but it's oh, it's barely not going to be enough for Chef I hack, it seems like. Sele, yeah, we got we've got the terror raiders growing there. Wispy will make it there before Sele does. El Survivor that boost up so hard on the Z wall in the middle of the game. Managed to create a comeback. I assume that is going to be two survivors dying with, with two. Daimaru and Spitz escaping through the exit gate and the result of set number one could not be clearer as he got a 4k on two generators remaining with Rocket on the killer representing Team Eternum and now we're two out by the survivor side of Team Eternum. Wispy was not able to meet, to match the results that Rocket was able to acquire so splendidly in the previous round. And as you said, we've got Uni coming up, but, but let us first hear a third perspective on the matter. Let us listen to Rats, and if you have anything to add, let's go here. Take it away, Rats. Of course. So I want to talk about the very beginning of this game, because I thought this was no task that was achievable to fuck in two generators, and Wispy just came in and said, you know what, Rats, watch this, and then basically had a kill at four generators remaining. It was a really good attempt. Um, I want to like rewind to this game to um, show again what has happened exactly, why that has had, why that has even happened in the first place. So we have had a good chase, right, in the beginning, into a hook that was painless, and then the survivors could kind of like bait it to farm rocket off the hook, not giving him much hook time because Wispy extended to pop a generator. And when Wispy got back, there was like again a really quick chase again, and the next hook trade was a force hesitation hook trade, which led into Rocket not even being able to force the BT hit through a window and just getting killed that way. And the only reason, in my opinion, the only reason was one single mistake, which in a 15 minute game can happen from Wispy, to when Wispy had the fourth hook, like the first hook after the tunnel out on the bottom side mm -hmm. of the map, he was looking at Shrap all around to, because he expected to have um, that the survivors have already put up somebody on bottom side setting up for the safe when he was going to go contest the top gens, which didn't happen. Both survivors were top side splitting generators and therefore got both generators done for free. 
bottom which, meaning shack, everybody. Uh, sorry, top side. They were on the main and, and main. like <laughs> top left side of the map. And getting both these gens done for free while Wispy was camping, I think was silly into second stage. That was one single mistake that led into a turnum not getting 4k above two generators, in my opinion, which was a really close game. It looked like like an absolute dominance by a turnum, but it was a really strong fight from X9 to, to contest that set either way. And now I believe we're going to the only set, which yep. that's the, what's this, the fifth only set, uh, this, sorry, the fifth trial of only sets that we've seen today like the first <laughs> try, uh, set no it's, there, so, there's, there's plenty of good reasons why he's so popular <laughs> yeah it's, it's a good set it's a good set it's a good map it's fun um he fun gets snowball family. he gets snowball it's really entertaining to watch you know what i mean don't mm. mind me when i was playing uh, against the wraith on dds <laughs> and on ping i was kind of like really unhappy all the time because those pilots are not fun to play on ping um at all I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out against an Oni, where you don't <laughs> <laughs> cannot give that tag, let alone on these kind of pellets that you're supposed to play on. Yeah, um, that's one thing. It's only with a twist because usually he's played on Call Tower or something simple as Wrecker's Yard, but he's on Dead Dog Saloon. So, unironically, we have seen two sets of Oni where from four teams that were all on the same region. And all of them have like an average of six stages. I expect a lot oh, okay. more now. That uh, yeah. I expect at least nine stages simply because of the ping at, um, disadvantage that the servers have to play on, right? Because the first hit, I will just, you know, it's gonna be much easier for the only to get that first hit much sooner simply because of the kind of palace you're playing with on that map, and. We will see how it's going to turn out. Maybe they'll be just be able to play off their exhaustion perks really well and kind of like play around it much better than I anticipate right now. I mean, they're good players, so who knows? Can happen. Um, but I definitely expect more stages than just the average of six that we've seen today. No, one thing that has left me quite puzzled as soon as I saw the killers that have been picked between these two teams is you're, we always know what teams team picks which killer right we had a turn and pick demogorgon and now we have x9 pick oni and one thing that the reason why i'm a bit confused is because a have what the, the only main for the past three to four years probably ever since he's come out we've got we've got wispy of course on a turn who is extremely good at practically any, any killer on the other side we've got vlas who is a very well-known only player and he's practically always played him for all his different teams that he's been on throughout his journey through competitive DBD. So I'm really curious if it comes down to the map as to why X9 have made this decision, or if it's literally just ping, which I doubt, however, because X Wispy is playing against four survivors that range from between 120 to 150 ping, if it's standard, since Wispy is easy. Coast and their survivors are spread across Europe. So it's obvious it's going to show 110, but they're all operating on different pings. But on the other side, Vlas is going to have at least one NAVS survivor in the lobby. So that on Dead Dog as well. I have never seen Vlas play only on Dead Dog. That's also one thing. It's always been it's always been Call Tower, which is why I'm also even more grateful for this balancing to really spice it up and put us on a different location. But I find it quite weird since Eternum Stenimal Garden. That's that sense to me, that pick to me makes a lot of sense since Rocket is so well known on it. But now we've got X9 picking only against Vlas. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a couple of great points made for sure. Like you said, uh, first of all, shout out to the balancing team, you know, making things, uh, you know, in, in a game where there might be some balancing changes, but maybe not, it can be really stagnant, right, to have uh, a lot of the same killers on the same maps. Obviously, those are balancing issues, but it's also really nice to see the fact that they're mixing things up here and there. So that's actually really cool. But like you said, the pick against someone who is probably known on experience, right? Like you said, Vloss, uh, you know, potentially bringing out the oni right here um yeah, so it's gonna be really win. it's gonna be really nice to see like you know can that experience you know regardless of either latency regardless of new maps let's see if that experience can secure them the 2-0 right here or potentially providing the win con that might be uh or being able to match whatever win con that we're gonna see uh from i believe wispy right on the on the killer yeah yeah absolutely um i already know vlas quite well because he was the main killer for several teams that i've played on so i know his only and we were already uh, when i was on Oboe, we were able to be trauma as well with him on only so this is going to be so much more interesting I'm, i always love seeing
especially when it's in such experienced hands as uh, such of uh, Wispy and Vlas that we are about to spectate, but we finally loaded into a trial after one of the teams has called for a for a short delay as they had some technical issues, but those are all completely solved now, and it's got still a Donda Rocket and Spitz on the survivor side, as Rocket is already on a very, very unsafe pallet in the middle, has to play for the stun, otherwise he's practically going to be it. No, that's actually... Well, <laughs> I, he's just proven me otherwise. He was able to get that pellet drop in a very compromising spot, and he get, manages to get the live perfectly chained to Shaq, and doesn't even vault it. That was beautiful by Rocket. Very beautiful stuff. Great awareness right there. Again, Rocket, the 1v1 expert, if anyone, on this team, right? Just the fact that, uh, you know, Rocket understands exactly where to go after certain situations. One of my first thoughts was he was going to try to chain that unsafe pallet with the pallet right outside the yeah, yeah, building. Same. But no, has the life and it ends up making that distance to Shaq wasting even more time so that decision making from rocket is why he's one of the most feared dbd players in you know in all around general yeah i mean he just showed that off exactly as well Sele will be able to connect this Ooh. Wisp, Wisp, i was gonna say is Wisp getting lost here but no instead just goes back to upper side here of the map he's gonna go back to the three gen goes this is also now the third time that we've seen in in the games that we've casted together as me uh, this is the third the third time that we are also now seeing dead dog so will either of these killers finally have the infamous three gen on the dead dog finally first blood will be drawn by dunder wispy will be able to chain with ability also bringing the splinter tool and the akita squad once more to get that much more blood out of the first hit and get the ability rolling as soon as possible yeah, absolutely. You know, we got that hit right there, not before the gen pops right there, though. Can we get another hit? No, no one home for it. You know, great stuff right there from Dunder trying to get away. Wispy, though, again, has the power on lockdown. And like you said, was looking about, was looking into chasing Silly, but then decides to go back and kick the gen. Again, those telegraphed or like... With their healing also against this duck, they don't want him to get much blood out of Dunder here. So maybe this pays off, but it all depends on whether or not Soleil will be able to wrap up this ability. And this comes through! It's gonna strike the wrong type of wood here, not gonna land on the pallet. The one part that's actually... That was uh, very awkward. That was terrifying! Well. That was so happening? scary! I'm not gonna lie to you! He just oh, super him! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and also, oh. as I was talking about it, Wispy finally has the Gallows 3 gen. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a really good point for oh, sure. No. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Definitely has the Gallows 3 gen, so are we going to potentially see maybe a little bit of uh, more zone out, right? To try to defend that a little bit more. They're going to find that first hook, uh, finally, and going to find the Pain Res right there. It does have, uh, you know, the um, the Eruption as well, and has, obviously, the Pop Goes the Weasel. So, lots of slowdown right here. You know, basically running, you know, uh, Corrupt, which is very common, basically, on everyone at this point. Uh, and then we have, you know, the three, three of the strongest slowdown perks in the game. If Wispy really wants to, he can also just stand still in front of the hook and just camp out the three gen if he really wants to secure the 4 on one. Yeah, that would be definitely uh, a choice that, you know, would definitely not be frowned upon in terms of like, uh, in terms of being optimal and trying to go for yeah. the right decisions right here. Because again, Wispy needs to provide a big game right here because we do have loss coming in later as well. So that's going to be a situation where, you know, Wispy has to show out and has to make a statement. Kind of how, like how Rocket did earlier, right? Like set the tone for the match. That yeah. way, you know, they either have to play out of their minds to match it or we're going to game three. So... We're going to have to see what it is right here. Survivor's doubling up on this gen. Great stuff. Trying to break that. So if I'm Wispy, maybe maybe thinking about traversing over to that further gen. And it seems like it's about to be too late for that. They pop it right in Wispy's face. Three gen goes bye-bye. And Spitz is not even hit here in this corner. Manages to get the stun on the rather unsafe pallet. That's also one that throws me back because that's one of those pallets that you're always that you're practically always forced to juke on if you play on this map as survivor and we see a very successful play here by spitz managed to get out of that very tricky situation this could have turned completely south if wispy had made it there just a little sooner and would have been able to get a hit on either of these survivors and it turns out the reset that they got on dunder at the start 
Also, it was extremely beneficial because now Wispy is struggling immensely to get any sort of blood generation going and is now forced to run after Silly around main building to finally get it regained. That's two stages at two generators remaining and not a single three gen is left on the map to defend. Absolutely great awareness right here from the survivors. Gets a little bit stuck on that box right there. A little bit unfortunate. Can you get this down right here? It looks like, oh. no, you're not going to get it, silly. Wasting just a little bit more time. Can you make it to this pallet? I don't think so. No, the answer is definitely no. But man, this, uh, you know, this poor slowdown. Oh, careful. The sprint burst coming in clutch. No way. That was such a sticky situation that Thunder was able to get himself out of. Yeah, but this ability might... Oh, this is so tense. The ability might run out soon, and then Dunder is very well set up for a pallet save. Yeah, he's still gonna stand nearby, and Rocket is also on standby. We've got two survivors here. Doesn't seem like Rocket was spotted just yet. So maybe we've got... A, this is a potential pallet save. Oh, no, the Splat Marks have uh, revealed Rocket, yep. Yeah, Rocket held shift for just a split second, and you, you probably see the scratch marks, you know, start to form from yeah. uh, Wispy's point of view. So that makes it really difficult right here. Does get the pickup right here, and yeah, that's gonna ha that's gonna end up being the kill on on Silly. Yeah, Rocket most likely just completely abandoned that situation. Wispy finally claims the first kill of the trial. Still has two generators remaining on the gallows, but the other two gens are exactly across the map. As you see, it's very dramatically drop off. In the, in the corner of Wispy's eye. Yeah, we've got a perfect gen split, so this is a really good setup for our survivors. Wispy also doesn't have much blood anywhere on the map. The injured chasers didn't take long. The survivors also immediately healed up, so there won't be any large blood pools anywhere. As we did see Donner just being killed as well, so there is going to be one large, rather large pool somewhere on the map. Right now the ability is 99, and there we go. The final blood up has been collected. It seems like this is the spot where they healed since we've got the ring of blood surrounding the generator and now this eruption and painless is once again just going to hit like a truck in the enforced 3v1 that team eternum now have to deal with absolutely that's definitely going to be uh one of the one of the questions for sure is just that the fact that they are resetting so at like so constantly and they're denying that power un up until just now you gotta think if that's maybe you know a little bit of inside scoop right from Vloss being like hey you need to try to do this i promise you this will work this will deny a little bit more power right because that's the big thing right is only without power is actually really you know not not the greatest killer to, to you know to play as so um but now wispy trying to find potentially someone maybe rotate out of frame a little bit or maybe rotate in an uncomfortable situation so you can pop the power and try to get this down and it looks like he's found his target right here who's he gonna go for can we get any value out of this dash right here going towards that top side of the map is that where the survivor is no you got to be careful right here though looking down maybe trying to find something here oh are we going to see a repeat of what Lactron did to Jokard in the previous trial someone is somewhere hiding behind some of these rocks and Wispy just completely tossed does not know, did not find, oh, it was Spitz hiding behind the boxes. Unbelievable. That's the, that's a repeat of this happening, but this is exactly what Oni's kryptonite is. If, well, I was going to say, is that someone, but that was just a dead person in, seated in a, in a chair. I thought there was someone being found then. But yeah, uh, Wispy will also not be able to find any of these stealthing survivors. That's also the strength of Dead Dog Saloon. There are so many bushes. So many colorless rocks, and if our survivors bring a bring a tire that fits the overall color palette of the map, it's going to be close to impossible to find stealthing survivors in corners. Absolutely. I mean, Ada with that trench coat could definitely stealth out uh, pretty yeah. pretty effectively on those rocks, like exactly like you said earlier. So, and I'm not if I'm not mistaken, Spitz is also the one with BL. So that's gonna be uh, re yeah. that's gonna be the gen that Spitz is definitely going to take a lot of time uh, to try mm -hmm. to pressure. And there it is. Those mind games can be interesting because you can close that distance off if you read that they're gonna fall off at the right time. Obviously, it's hard to get audio cues because of the effect that BL has, where they don't make any noise when they do fall. So. Lots of, lots of great awareness right there from Spitz trying to mind game the situation. And again, Wispy going to have to go towards that gen uh, with the large pool of blood, potentially trying to get something. But again, these early resets and these quick resets don't allow a ton of resources. So you see um, you see Wispy opt to go for just the M1 hit as opposed to try to get more power. Oh, 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 the slam down. 
the smack dunk, unbelievable play by Wisby. I did not expect that to work, but Dunder just com got completely punked on by Wisby's M1 there. Going around, I did really not expect that play to work. Usually Dunder dropped that, Dunder dropped that pallet correctly. It's one of those that you just want to drop early and then just soak the house so you can just vault it over and over and the killer's never going to catch up unless they manage to get somehow to bloodlust three. But Wisby just... <laughs> <laughs> Turns into LeBron James for a second there and lands a perfect slam dunk right into Donda's head and manages to get the down very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. One of the hardest, one of the hard pallets right there to deal with. But if there's a hole right underneath on one of the sides, you could definitely catch him by surprise. And it was just like, hello there, and had no idea what was going on. You saw Dunder just like stand oh, still for a yeah. second. Could not, could not believe what he was seeing, which was crazy to say the very least. However, we do get that, we get that first look finally onto Dunder. So, uh, you know, again, every fresh hook potentially as we set the win condition could come back to help X9. And there's the pull right there that we saw with Wispy ignore earlier, so gonna try to get something right there. And again, Fitz is gonna opt to go for uh, that gen because the windows right there can get the vault into the BL to try to, you know, waste a little bit more time right here. And does have a pretty good connection. I think with that speed boost, that's actually a really good connection to that window from uh, from the top side of the window, from the top window. You know, I really need someone to take that, to clip that and re-edit it so it goes, and his name is X9 Wispy. And then just lands the slam dunk. Wispy is going to be able to get the down onto Spitz, finding him in hiding in the corner of mine. It's, it, you know, it's always really weird to me whenever someone is tunneled out. We only see five stages off the game, but the momentum has just switched so dramatically to, uh, to Wispy's favor. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. But here comes more power right here. And again, not opting to go for that early reset on the Dunder, mainly because I assume Rocket was focused on rotating over to get that unhook that we just saw happen. So we're probably not going to see that early reset, which means potentially more pools of blood for this end game. You know, because this is the war of attrition that we've talked about earlier is, mm -hmm. can you get this last generator? But wow, reading the push check! Rocket, no bush is safe against the juggernaut that is X9 Wispy. Gets the down, gets the power, and gets the hook. No, that was perfect. For a frame, I saw Rocket's... The Blake's face light up in the bush, and that's exactly what Wispy aimed for. Yeah, it was... <laughs> right into the face, and Rocket goes down immediately. That looked absolutely amazing. <laughs> It was at this moment he knew he messed <laughs> up ever so slightly. <laughs> how I got into this situation. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my oh. goodness, man. Lots of great moments right there. And man, that was a uh, that was a uh, that was so much fun to watch. I'm not even going to lie to you. And we see the eruption and the pain rest just he, somehow Wispy still got two pain rest sacks left as well. And every single swipe I has already been been down as well. You see Rocket being healed by the second wind in the meantime. Just love seeing that perk put to use as well. It's one of my favorite perks whenever it is it does actually manage to pop off. Yeah, Wispy is just gonna decide to slug Dunder. Is in a very promising situation now. Just head on over with the. I saw. I think I just saw a rocket crouching in the book. Cactus. Yeah, my guy is still trying to crouch. The down. No work. Double whammy. <laughs> Wispy is gonna get the down right back on him, and that's Rocket going down in the same corner after an attempt at crouching. Yeah. yeah my thing. Jake is yeah. usually associated with the color green, right? And that's why Rocket was obviously. Just sort of attracted to hugging the cactus, but it seems like it didn't turn out so well. There's no escape. There's no escape. You can run, but you can't hide, Wispy says. Finds it again <laughs> and again. Knew that Rocket would try to stealth out a little bit, but knew that Rocket would also move to a different part of the corner to stealth. Wispy was just so aware. Gets that hit on the pop, and now slowly but surely is stalling out the game a little bit in terms of gen progress we saw you know potentially you know not not too much gen progression oh, down right here that's the long that was the log tech or something i don't know that's crazy <laughs> oh no there he is that was dumbo actually then yeah we see that was why i was utilizing any kind of material they can find on this map to stealth behind yeah. And I also love how yeah. Wispy does not have a 3 dent whatsoever, yeah. but the only ability just makes it possible. Uh. They're not an aura reveal in the corner as well. 
So Wispy all now knows exactly where all of our swallows are left and only two men left standing. It's up to Donda and Spitz turn this around. But realistically, I don't think Wispy will allow enough for another gym to pop. No, not at all, especially with the fact that every we saw the early resets to deny that power in the early and oh. mid game. However, you know, we don't see those resets now, and this is where it's really gonna hurt when it's a 1v2 and you have to stealth out or you have to juice. If not, it's gonna be the 4k1, which looks like that's exactly what's gonna oh, happen. So gets the, the yeah, gets the pop hit right there, and that, that's gonna be that potentially is gonna be it. Yeah, that's the, the that's what, what that that looked like an just an inst instantaneous flick, didn't it? The way he just turned the corner, that that looked amazing. The way Whiskey just sort of appeared for a frame and door frame, and then immediately hovered to the other side. But yeah, this is the huge advantage that we face once you are injured, full of blood, the grunts of pain. There is nowhere left to hide against Wispy in the ability, despite prioritizing kicking the gen first but he's still got he's still all ears for dundas groans of pain and also saw, saw the blood quite evidently very lucky for wispy also too as soon as he finished kicking the gen did do the 180 and then be right in front of the pools of blood and now it's all up to spits but i don't think our survivor will hide this for a very long time as we see dunder crouching probably over to half i would assume in case wispy is a bit over ambitious and just down spit Spits and then immediately puts Mondo. But he is still has to give one extra stage here. Also going for the slam dunk paddle drop. But this time El Survivor goes for it. If Spitz is put on the hook, then Wispy still has plenty of time to make it all the way over to the to hatch. And the grab is going to come through. Spitz with the stagger on the downfall. Doesn't make it over in time. That's going to be the grab, the hook, and Wispy most likely is getting right over to hatch and block it. Or just pick up Spitz even. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that grab right there definitely uh, thanks to not having the balance standing available right there for you if you're if you're Spitz because those were the two gens that you saw Spitz mainly focus on was the one at Gallus and the one that had access to that higher window to balance off of. But yeah, it looks like that's just going to be the pickup right here and that's going to be the 4K at one gen again. We know why Wispy picked this killer because he is very experienced. Got the 4K one right here on Dead Dog, but that's going to be uh, that's going to be. Uh, uh, a 4k1 and now Gloss is gonna have to come in and really show really show out for his team in order to get the 2-0 victory if not we're gonna go to the tiebreaker so uh, it's definitely gonna be a very uh, very very interesting ending to this second set rats you know having the analyst the man self back up on the desk with us what do you think yeah so Definitely confident performance by X9 for sure. So I have picked this set for a reason. We've seen this. Um, I'm confident in saying that X9 also is gonna be going to be confident in playing on the set on surf side. I know it's gonna be last. I know it's gonna be a difficult match for them, but it can still go either way. It can also still be a tie on the set, especially on the set. With the 4K1. I did not expect the 4K1. Now that really unleashed the genie in the bottle, and now everything's possible. Especially now that Blast can also very comfortably probably also just enforce the 3 gen and then 4K on it, the same way that Wispy kind of did. Didn't even have the 3 gen, but just had the ability on the go so many bloody times that he could just traverse the map constantly as soon as the 3v1 was enforced. I want to point out, though, the game plan that Eternum brought up into this game here by... Um, playing it fairly slow. They had a tunnel happen, but they chose to go for those quick resets, as you've mentioned, to deny as much power as possible, and then stealthed out the first power that Wispy had, like fully stealthed out once yeah. um, the first kill happened, which that's the reason why the first kill happened on two gens left, but they made sure that there was no fusion anymore for that kill, and they made sure that everybody was healthy, and basically made sure that there was no blood or barely any blood on the map. If Dunder, for example, on when he was uh, got when he was gotten chased after the first power after the tunnel happened, um, didn't get mind game that way on the tile, which well done by Wispy. If that chase on the M1 would have been a little bit longer and the down wouldn't have happened with the M1 chase as well, I'm pretty confident in saying that the generator that Dunder was working on, which was already on like 60% at that time, could have also popped for that chase. 
which then painless happened and pop happened and eruption happened and the generator mm -hmm. was gone to zero again, back to nothing. And at that point, Wispy was in a position where slowly but surely everybody got into the injured state and stayed in the injured state, giving him the continuous power for the remainder of the trial, resulting in the result that happened, right? Which yeah. we have seen. Um, sure, we have tr seen Rocket try and stuff out in bushes all along, which <laughs> if that would have worked out, out... It did not work out, let's it, be honest. It could have. It could I'm have talking about the cactus. Out, I mean, he would have probably died either way if he pre-left and ran, then same thing would have happened, right? It's like, you have to try something, it didn't work out, um, but we are, gonna, we are going to see the exact same matchup now with... going to be dealing with the same ping again. May, I don't know how X9 is going to be dealing with this. I think Eternum's approach against this uh, match uh, on this map was very, was very smart. It didn't work quite out as, out as planned, but still, I think 4K1 is a reasonable um, result considering what they had to play with. Um, yeah. So, I think this can still go either way, simply because I also said average result for the same region, like for if the same region plays against the same region, it was going to be like six, seven stages on Oni, which we have mm -hmm. seen in this tournament already. But if you play in cross region on ping, it's going to be much, much higher, especially on a set like this where you can't give the first and one hit on so like these pallets. Um, so it's going to be more stages. I don't know if the average result in this should be 4k1. <laughs> uh, I'm confident in saying that X9 will show us what the average result is going to be. I hope they put having up a good fight and they lock in their own set as, as they've picked it, right? And make sure that they win it by making a, showing a comfortable set here. And then we go to the tiebreaker, but I'm also not surprised if, if Lust can secure a 4k2 even, or maybe a tiebreaker. This can definitely still go either way. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the X9 survivors, uh, you know, and Wispy, and Wispy specifically needed to come in and set the statement, set the record straight that, hey, we're here. You know, all of our wins have not been flukes and we have to put out a big statement. And like like we talked about right now. Yeah, that's 4K1 right now is going to be uh, it's going to be the win condition. But like you said, it definitely could go either way. If anyone can do it, though, you know, just based on what Mathis has told us, uh, it can be Vloss can definitely be the one to, to break the win con. Yeah, regardless, it is still going to be a very difficult task. 4K1 is not usually what is expected from an Oni, or as Raz has already pointed out. It's still quite questionable because Oni on Dead Dog Saloon is still something that we have to gain more experience on. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see Vlas, so Archon, Sinister, and oh boy, and now Eternum on the Oni, his signature killer practically right after his nurse, most likely. We are going to also see him bring the pixel that's the exact same build that we had previously. The Eruption, the Pain Rise, and the... Oh, did we see Bamboozle before? It's definitely the same add-on, so we've got the Akita's Crush for the speed, and the Splinter Tool for the Blood Orbs. Yeah, absolutely. It's not going to be the bamboozle coming in uh, this time around. We did see, uh, we saw pop, uh, pop combined with oh, yeah, the yeah, eruption. Yeah. So uh, that's why we, you know, maybe seeing the bamboozle might be a little bit different here. Maybe wants to traverse this main building a little bit easier, especially because these window chains right here can be uh, very, very useful against this killer, especially at the beginning of the game, where denying that first hit is everything. So obviously, Vloss wants to maybe get rid of that. No pallet right here too. Going to end up getting the hit. Right here, though. Yeah, I was about to say, he's on the Californian clutch, Mr. Vistus, but it is not going to be enough. That Bloodlust 1 will not allow Vistus to connect to the Shack tile as effortlessly as we saw from Rocket in the previous tile. Through his trial, who managed to utilize Live to make it out of a very sticky situation right into the Shack window vault and did not allow Wispy to get that early strike that Vlas was just able to acquire. Also, that Corrupt Intervention is in a really nice spot actually it blocked off both of the corner gents but did not block off the um scaffold which is quite easier for the killer usually to defend last we're just gonna see him go upstairs probably use eruption and then try to use his ability to get it down and get some pressure with the eruption pops as soon as they come through but it doesn't seem like Vlas is going to pop his ability just yet he's been rather patient with his ability he wants to get into a more promising situation with his power he's gonna pop it on the other side of the of on the other side of the upstairs main part, it's very interesting now. Survivor was in fact just camping this window. Does have the bamboozle to make it across a bit faster. 
Blast immediately going to cancel the ability, expecting El Swiver to stay closer to the window. And we see a crowd from the corner, but it is going to tremendously backfire. Jar is going to bite the dust, and that is the eruption pop that we were so eagerly waiting for in the distance. Absolutely, oh. the eruption pop in the distance, but not before that further generator gets again. Ace is screaming like crazy. You know, we <laughs> saw the eruption. We saw the eruption yell, and then we also heard the pain resio as well. Uh, but yeah, I was gonna point out that that it felt like we were, that that power was very very early compared to the last game. But yeah. uh, I could be wrong if I'm not mistaken. But gonna get the quick unhook right here onto Jaw the power that's right you go for either the second hook stage or you get yet another survivor hit right here it looks like you're gonna go for the other survivor right here can you find something right here no nobody home wispy going uh going up against Bloss right now this is the matchup that we want to see because he just killed the rest of his team right now so now can wispy show out uh as a survivor as well not just as a killer right here that was an extremely cocky save as well they were right next to Bloss who had his ability cocked and ready and they decided to still go for it Wispy is going to pay the price after a longer than expected chase, however, does we already know Vast has the pain resonance hook right here, so that is going to apply some more pressure. But else Vivas were already able to, able to pop two remaining generators. So now we've got three left on the board and another already at 50%. So this gen pressure that we already saw in the Demogorgon set. X9 are way faster when it comes to the early game, but it is still all about the late game. Once Blast has one survivor eliminated, and once that pain rose and eruption is going to be facing only three survivors left in the trial. Yeah, absolutely. That's when it gets, uh, that's when um, it could definitely get very scary right there. And again, Jaw trying to stealth out, but right there, uh, Vloss understanding that one, if you're dashing and for some oh, reason oh, you're not oh. moving, are we gonna get the down here? Double down and, and the BT hit right there, the endurance hit, I believe. Uh, and that's gonna be another one on the Wispy. Wispy gonna have to outlast this one. And now Haunt is going to have to, oh. you know, rotate around. Haunt's not trying to pick up someone. He was prioritizing the gen. Oh, that was barely the down as well. Vlas could go for the triple down, but Wispy barely makes it out of alive. Is now still forced to mend, so that survivor will be incapacitated for the for, for the amount of seconds that he has to mend. I believe that's 40, right? Could be. And Vistus will be on the hook. That's going to be another pain risk. The generator has just popped, and Vlas needs to get the 4K now or after a gen if he wants to either meet the win condition or enforce a restart of this file and give his survivors another chance to get a better resource than a 4k at one generator remaining. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is the turning point right here. And uh, one thing to note that we didn't see on the other the first half of the Oni set is that these X line survivors have been really aggressive with these unhooks at the cost of being injured for a much longer period of time. We saw those immediate resets coming in uh, from the other survivors. So we saw that power not popping as often, but now we have, you know, maybe two or three different pools. That's gonna be the balanced landing right there. Great stuff though. Jaw though is dead on hook. So you gotta be careful right here. Can you reach this pallet? No, you are not. And they also decided to heal. So that is not going to be much gen pressure in the meantime. Vlas might actually be able to fork this at two. Now that Jar is not yet eliminated, however, that's going to be the second stage on our survivor. The person that has tried to stealth all twice and failed miserably twice on both attempts. But yeah, Vlas still not able to tunnel anyone out. He still needs to find, either needs to kill, uh, camp out Jar now, but I don't think he has the time to do so. He will force to go for these generators. All of the survivors have decided to reset, but I do believe Vlas has plenty of blood still left on the map. So I don't think that is going to, oh, 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 oh my God, this is found in the bush. And uh, immediately forces the ability, head on is not going to come and block here. Yeah, it's not fast enough. Absolutely, gotta wait a few seconds before it becomes active. That's actually really, really, really unfortunate. But are you going to make it to Jaw in time? Are you gonna cut off right here? This is so scary. And we see the second win prop again as well. Vlas is gonna opt to go for Jaw, 
and Vistas leaves the gen also. Vlas is set up to fork at this at two, but he needs to desperately get it down here. He manages to eliminate Haunt once for the first time. Now, this it would be a fresh pain rest, but he needs to get at least two downs from this. Otherwise, the survivors are in a really good spot. Turn this around and pop the last end. Vistas will be found on top of main, and he also knows where Wispy is. Vlas's ability use is just so unbelievably oppressive throughout this entire trial. That's two survivors down again. That is Vistas. I believe dying on Hook and Horn's first stage. That's perfect for Lars. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, oh, the Jenga pop though. That's crazy. So at the very least, we're going to the tie if Vlas gets this 4K right Still here at one, one gen. gen. But no one dead. That's the problem, right? Is that at this point we had someone dead earlier. So uh, I believe it was Rocket who died first. Died rather early compared to this situation right here. Now Jaw though, can you get this save? Gonna go for the drop. Oh no. I mean, at least that's two survivors down in the middle, but he's not going to be able to get the last pain rest of Haunt now, as there are no hooks nearby, and Vlas felt too threatened to let this, to let Vistus off the hook here, quite literally. And we see Vlas utilizing his ability again, Vistus coming in for the body block with his base given turrets off the hook, but it does, oh, 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 that was really damn close. Gets the double hit, but almost two tap Vistus here, as he was stuck in the drop down. <laughs> Oh, that's the last gen. That's the last gen. Oh, no. It's the last There's gen no way. right now. x is going to send this to a tiebreaker. He did not get the pain rest on Horn, and that is the final generator pop. Blast was not able to match Wispy's surreal performance with a 4K on one generator remaining. The best we've recorded yet throughout this entire trial and uh, throughout this entire tournament. And it could not have come at a better turning than against Vlas, who is most, who's very close to getting a lot of, who has already acquired a lot of stages here. But his mistake was to really not eliminate anyone throughout the trial. And X9 kept forcing him to get individual stages. And they also extremely cocky on those immediate rescues here. Something that I've not seen often against an Oni. I risk but high reward if you're able to make those quick rescues count and x9 showing us the play style opposed to you know again a very altruistic aggressive play style which doesn't necessarily feel like is the norm normally you play a lot more patient you don't want to give free health states here and there but x9 being it to be worth it in the very end as they get the two-man escape five generators done very much over the wing condition and we're gonna force us to a set three against the singularity but before yep. that man Rats, I'm not even one mad, of the <laughs> man we are going to see obi we are going to see obi singularity i'm so excited but real quick before we do yes. get to that point there has to have been some key moments that we might have not have looked at that could have changed the tides of that match rats what do you think Oh, for sure. There have been so many instances where the game could have been played differently, but I'm not here to judge how the teams are supposed to play that, because uh, sure, we have seen like two different playstyles of the killer players, but I would like to really much point out the two completely different playstyles that we have seen, how the survivors have been approaching these two sets. As you've mentioned already in-game, with the very many like resets from Eternum and the very aggressive playstyle from X9, they were not they were not scared of a tunnel out necessarily. They were cranking those generators. They were ignoring the resets for the most part. They were just like trying to get out of this game as soon as possible and give it what it takes. You always say give credit where credit is due, and I think this applies for this set specifically because yes, we have seen Blast perform really well with his power and getting all sorts of downs and all sorts of different scenarios there, and getting a lot of pressure from his hooks. But in the end, as also Matthew said, maybe not taking the tunnel out, maybe his maybe his playstyle was a bit off from what we needed to play, uh, what we needed to play like to win that set. But you can also not underestimate the fact that X9 wasn't scared. X9 was putting up that fight. They they knew what they were doing. They were cranking those generators, and they knew who could throw themselves in to get hooked again, knowing what they needed to play for. Right? They knew we need to pop five gens. Give what it takes. If it's going to be nine stages, eight stages, doesn't matter. Just get the gens done. As long as it's not tunneling, uh, he's not like getting a kill early on. They're chilling, which they've shown that they can play off that. And that was really well done by X9 here. I think 
we always say, ah, ping here, ping there, but like they have played that set really well. And you've seen, even though Vlas was a very capable only, how little he could do at the end to, to secure this win here. It all really depends on what these survivors really prepare for you. We saw, we've seen that also already with the Wraith set that we had between Synapse and Calamity previously about five gate. I think that was about five map five sets ago. Yeah, so a couple more matches than I previously anticipated. But yeah, Jokart is known to be extremely good on Wraith or on Killer in general. I've seen him 4K tons and tons of Wraith games in. Also, and he was able to ultimately get a 4K on one, but it didn't matter because Hind was able to 4K on three generators remaining. And that's kind of the situation that we had here as well, because a 4K with Oni so far, that is unheard of with on Dead Dog Saloon of this tournament. As you've pointed out, Rats, we've had about six stage, six to eight stages was about the average what we've seen so far. And you were expecting nine stages at best to see from these two teams. And Wispy got a 4K on one right from the get go. Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely something uh, crazy to say the very least. Uh, but yeah, like you said, there was definitely uh, like you both made some very good points, and then obviously uh, Rats talked about situations where uh, it could have potentially been uh, you know the tides, but ultimately the high risk, high reward, uh, very quick, fast, uh, fast rescues, and you know altruism ended up proving to be enough to put them over uh, on the Oni set. And now, like you said, we're gonna get the we're gonna get the singularity, which again we've seen some pretty some pretty crazy uh, crazy singularity plays as well. Uh, we're gonna see Obi uh, on the Eternum side, you know, Hell running. Yeah running it and then obviously we're gonna see wispy as well uh in the second half of this of this set as well uh so it's gonna be you know those long sets you know set three going you know going back and forth back and forth you know you gotta think if fatigue might be a factor for someone like wispy you know that's a lot of games that mm -hmm. he's gonna have to play right he played demo he survived he played survivor against demo uh survived against oni played oni you know and now gonna have to play another two matches so uh especially against singularity who has uh has the ability to slow the game down a little bit uh with the camera placements uh and if you get the nice camera angles as well you can you can potentially slow the game down a whole lot so you know these games might take a while so it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a great time for sure but obviously um you know we have some last minute predictions potentially i want to hear what mathis you have to say also if rats if you're still around i would love to hear what you have to say as well yeah the first thing i before rats you your prediction the first thing i really want to add is we have seen both of these teams play Singularity already in this tournament. And what the results were, I have them written down in my notes here. Eternum already picked Singularity against Void in round one. And Obi was able to 4k on one and their survi and Eternum survivors three staged with four men out of the gate. And X9, that is, Singularity is the only set so far they've actually dropped against Rapture in, the, in uh, round one. They won two to one and they lost the singularity set. I think it's important to mention here that they have picked that set there and Wispy had a great performance of a 4k1, but I believe then they lost the set because they've been 4k on two generators. Really close, it was a really close game. But I think that was a uh, one game out of the 20 that they've been 4k on. I don't think yep. we're going to see that again. I'm really excited to see how they're going to play it this time around and i know for a fact that as you've just mentioned that both of them know how to play this killer like both teams have a killer player that knows how to play singularity on a really high level um so maybe we'll see 4ks we've seen 4ks already from the set from both teams yeah we'll see how these sets are going to go now they can honestly still be 4ks but also if they play well on surf side this can also still go either way on that side and we have successfully Finally loaded into Obi's singularity performance as it is unfolding itself right before our very eyes. The king from Norway, the undisputed, unequivocal best player from his country. Obi with absolutely phenomenal performances on these rather unconventional killers because he plays Dredge and he plays singularity for his team, even though he's also Blight main, one of the best we've also ever seen in, in competitive Dead by Daylight. So I am absolutely hyped to see a big man Obi, not to be confused with Roblox Obis. <laughs> because I've yes. heard Cass, I've heard Cass pronounce his name Obi before. It is very much Obi. 
Yeah, OB. There we go. You know, I like appreciate you making the clarification. You know, we <laughs> have to make sure that we, you know, we're we're giving everyone these 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 killers and these survivors have been working so hard. We got to get the names right, right? So, but we're gonna get this first chase right here onto Haunt. Gonna make it across the window right here. This is gonna be oh, but the mind game right there gonna lose the mind game against uh, against uh, OB right there. Now we have the cameras available, and this is a quick teleport potentially if you can cut Haunt off right now. Gets the tag right there with the camera. Yeah, we are already going to see a very early Inja onto Haunt and Singularity has such unique playstyles. Well, we are seeing that with the incredibly fast vault that early put to great use. Haunt will be biting the dust as our first survivor off the trial. That is a ridiculously early down. One thing we also need to point out, of course, we are on not just any suffoc on just the standard suffocation pit. We are on suffocation pit number two. So that is why you're going to see a somewhat different loadout to what most players are used to and this is why main is also in a different position but we'll see i do believe the map is a bit smaller if i'm not mistaken so that should be a bit beneficial to the singularity also with the add-ons that obi is bringing here so first of all the brown one we've got the the pit ball glove which is going to extend the duration of the overclock mode by 15 percent and then the purple add-on that he has is the soma family photo which is going to grant him a 5% haste status effect during overclock, and it also reduces the duration of overclock. So the two add-ons that he's bringing here are sort of the brown one is sort of supposed to be the antidote to the uh, to the side effect that the purple one brings. So essentially, what he's going to have, he's going to have an overall 5% haste during the overclock, which is going to change up the game hugely as he's about to get the second save onto Horn if there's no body block inbound. But we are seeing Jar already come in for exactly that. Absolutely already calling out the body block right there and Jaw gonna end up taking it right there. And again, uh, those uh, those uh, slight adjustments to the overclock mode could be why we saw the vault in, vault back uh, on the first down onto Haunt and why we saw it work so well. So here's gonna be right here. Can you make it to the, with the pallet? Yes, you can, but you're getting zoned out right here. Can you make it to another filler and extend this chase just a little bit longer? Oh, but the mind game right there, maybe trying to fake it. Unfortunately, not gonna do it. OB, very intelligent, very patient, and is rewarded with another down onto Haunt and another hook. I also need to correct myself immediately. This is not, <laughs> this is not I'm suffocation, but this is groaning video. storehouse. Number two, which is very evident considering OB is currently looking at a storehouse that is not the mine that we are used to from suffocation, but just need to get the cleared off, the, uh, clear, uh, get, the, get the sheets cleared. Uh, clean so yeah we've got obi still utilizing the uh, cameras trying to get as many survivors affected by his ability as possible so he can use his ability to teleport to as many as possible also we saw an emp get ready but obi will make it in time and gets the down onto jaw cross map is going to get quite far away now however from our survivor it already comes down to whether or not obi will be able to utilize another camera or he might barely be able to make it does he make the tp over to make it in time to interrupt the save no he's not going to be able to bond will be immediately affected by the ability since it spreads on contact obi misses the hit as well there onto wispy and instead it hits or places down another pod on the box very interesting spot there as well but yeah, all it comes down now to is Obi finding our survivor that is to be tunneled out. Haunt now currently on death row. And I just saw, I think that was, I just saw foot around the corner there. Yeah, it is going to be Haunt. Barely doesn't make the teleport there, however. Oh, hello. <laughs> Yeah, gonna get the gonna get the save, gonna get the hit right there onto onto right. but That's uh that's definitely a haunt on death hook as well. So you gotta be really really careful. Uh, can you stealth this out? But it looks like he's uh, fully intent on tracking where haunt is and finds the quick surprise swing around that's the awesome. pallet. Yeah, that's gonna be potentially it as well. Maybe Have I never survivor. Seen one. Yeah. Oh yeah. There it is. That's Jaw again. Over, that's <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that was just bound to happen as we saw our survivor haunt just standing still on the pallet and not free dropping it. At that moment, you already know it's going, that's going to be a pallet safe. Uh, Obi still picking it up, although I think there should be two survivors around. No, no one gets it! That's a dead haunt! That's a dead haunt with three gents left! You don't want to go oh. down 
another survivor with still three generators remaining and again setting up those low pods like you mentioned earlier i feel like those low pods are also very good oh tries to swing through it unfortunately doesn't get it can you make it to this window on time trying to obstruct the view wispy though drops the cracker and gets the vault with the life right here can you make it to this pallet yes you are and now the question's gonna be yeah gonna have to just break it right there make a little bit of distance maybe traverse towards the shack side of things where the gen is already completed unfortunate right there oh but he wins the mind game and makes it to shack and another filler how are there two fillers right outside of shack and, <laughs> and, like that's insane <laughs> it didn't they think map variation come on and shack fellas I, I was gonna say i'm pretty sure earlier when we saw I, I heard the punch up in the, the corner. I don't know if that was some uh, was a fail or not. But the moment we saw Vistas knock on the door, Shaq and and uh, Obi allowing him to come in after Vistas has been traded, he immediately bolted to Shaq and just dropped it, even though he wasn't even a chase. And now we just saw actually that help Wispy or be beneficial to him, as with Obi was forced to kick the pallet. It will be Vistas once again affected by the pod, and it will be immediately removing it as there's no further use to this. I love I love the setup that Obi's going with as well. He's really trying to get as much on our survivors as possible. Sees someone in the far distance, but barely doesn't connect the doesn't collect the pod, connect the ability onto Jar, but now finally does. Yeah, definitely finally connects the. Uh, hits a uh, jaw with the tag right there gets another uh, another generator done x9 you know even with a survivor less they're still bringing on the pressure but here it comes right here can you get the free drop right here you are and that's gonna be the overclock mode yet again but still gonna end up making it maybe getting a little bit more distance no there's nothing left for you anymore jaw going to end up going down in the corner right here away from everything the time that it takes for jaw to traverse uh to the corner and to get you know the down for obi to get the pickup and go to the hook it takes quite a little bit of time so this could be extra progress being done but it looks like we're just gonna get the reset right there onto wispy and this is going to be jar taking second stage on the hook so we're getting closer to a second survivor being eliminated from the trial as obi claims as pop goes to his on a generator that is very far progressed just immediately trans uh is it trans no i always forget that word Transitions to his ca into his camels. That's what I was, was going to say. There we go. Yeah, Obi's going to try to find as many survivors as possible. As both Wispy and Vistas were able to get rid of their pod on the back that Obi potentially teleport onto. Seems like Obi's also just going to remove one pod after the other and trying to find the most promising spots. Wispy's already armed with an AMP, so that is immediately going to remove. And Obi decides not to further continue this phase. Probably just going to try to place down another pod. And this is just working on the generator, not right next to the hook. Yeah, can we get the save though? We are going to get the trade right here, not before Wispy does go down right here. Uh, can we get the immediate hook? Because I feel like we still have two stacks of pain rest, so that might be a fresh hook right here. And there it is, providing some extra gen pressure passively. Now, as we potentially focus on the tunnel out, no, I think we're going to go for ace right here. Yeah, unsuspecting right there with the camera. That's crazy. That's crazy. You're just standing what? there. What? There's a killer coming to you, man. <laughs> My guy's just waving at the camera. Is this a good angle? Do I look good? Is this the first the Instagram reel? <laughs> I'm about to I'm about to loop this killer, but first let me take a selfie. Here we go. <laughs> Are we going? <laughs> 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 We're just having a great time. I've, I, I, lo I love that. Ball. I love I love the fact that we've gotten the cast together. This is such a good oh. time. But finally <laughs> finds that hook onto onto Vistis, onto the ace. And now we go back into business, getting the camera set up right here. Maybe trying to get some information. Which honestly is kind of crazy that Singularity basically uh, doesn't necessarily need info perks because the cameras are info themselves. And now you can prioritize slowdown or endgame perks depending on what killer, you're, uh, what kind of play style you want to go for. So uh, that's really scary uh, just in general to deal with. But uh, here we go. Get the full reset but thus find i think uh finds a survivor right here yeah obi no longer has to worry about his pain reses either as he's already claimed all four of them now it really comes down to how many gens can he 4k or can he at all 4k because there are some dear smokes from x9 have a few words to say about that as we've already seen previously in the only game for instance where they were able to get i think two survivors out of the gate even so this is what our survivors are trying to set up as well yeah, definitely trying to set up right there, but 
man, this is uh, this is a tough spot right here because you're in a tough, a sticky situation where do you want to prioritize getting this rescue or do you want to add some pressure right here? Now that you're committing to this chase at Shack right here, though, you got to think <laughs> potentially if you're if you're X9, hey, can we rotate to get this save real quick and maybe start pressuring gens again because you got to get another gen done right here before the second survivor goes down and and gets sacrificed. That way you can provide at least decent ish win con for uh for wispy on killer right here but you know obi trying to find something there no one home with that camera continuing to potentially find a uh, jaw here at shack again this is a situation where there's a, there's like two filler pallets right outside shack so it makes it really easy to chain those loops together but now everything is down at shack so if you're not running bl uh in this at this layout right here it's honestly not worth looping at shack anymore gonna go for probably the trade here though yeah, this is most definitely going to be at least the trade. Oh, does he make it in time? He doesn't! It's not going to be the trade then. Or oh, he has to at least work for it quite tremendously and doesn't have the fourth hesitation that we saw by Whiskey in the previous trial on the um, on the other killer that we saw. Oh, Demogorgon, right? Yeah, on the Demogorgon. The, the, the first set. Yeah, that's why we saw it coming top. It would have been more fitting if Obi brought the Singularity Sword as well, but instead opted to go for the Sophie Bot which doesn't belong to anyone. And Obi manages to tunnel out the second survivor, but barely does not make it to Wispy. And that one then might change up or might change a lot what we're going to see or the approach that we are going to see by Wispy. Probably just gonna wait on the vault here and then right back into it. Yeah, but we see Obi setting up the day flick with his M1, but is going to react accordingly to what Wispy does. Wispy is also just waiting that Obi teleports to the other side of the window, so he, so Wispy can fast forward right back into it. Oh. Yeah, and now we see that overclock speed. There's no way you get around that. Yeah, no, definitely no way you get around that, and that's gonna be... Uh, most likely that'll be it for uh, for X9 on the survivor side. Um, you know, at this point, you just you know you just slug and find and find um, find the Ace to get this 4K confirmed, 4K one generators potentially. Unless we see the craziest play ever, it looks like that's probably what it's gonna be. But honestly, that last gen, Wispy was so committed to it that Jaw ended up being dead on hook and ended up getting the trade uh, just to confirm that last gen. Maybe they thought you know the strategy was i don't think we're gonna get all of the gents pop and it might just be worth oh, it to just at least get the trade out right here that was blood yes that's correct are we going to are we going to use our tracking abilities as smart comp dvd killers or can we just rotate over for the pickup right here that would be crazy to just extend this a little bit longer too and he's found the area where he saw the blood on and one thing that i also liked what obi just did as soon as he got to that gem that vistus was working on he kicked it and then he also checked edge map thinking that maybe vistus is planning to just let wispy slug and wait for obi to return to wispy and expect the pickup and then wispy just actually was waiting in the corner the entire time waiting to get back on the generator and put the wind condition down to 4k zero and that's why that's the reason why obi was checking that edge map there but turns out vistus in fact, completely even, and despite seeing the pools of blood on the ground using his pod, was not able to make it over in time to find Vistus in a, out of or in a in a poor situation. Yeah, this is a, a, a interesting situation to be right here. Are, do you want to stealth this out or, or what the game plan is right here for sure? But regardless, you know, at the end of the day, you know, both teams, both sides working really hard to try to get set up their win conditions, try to set the tempo for the second half of the singularity set. This is going to be, I um, mean, you know, this is the, the 4K1 definitely looking to be uh, what the situ what the what the win condition is going to have to be. So, um, but right now at this point, you got to find the last survivor though. Can you find it, or are you going to commit to this uh, pickup right here? No, going to opt to just leave on the ground and potentially maybe cut him off looking everywhere. Uh, at this point, you know, you got to start checking every nook and cranny, and maybe uh, Ace is in the corner somewhere. We did see that earlier as well, though, so. Yeah, this might just last longer than all of World War One with this trench warfare going on that we are spectating <laughs> currently, with uh, all, both sides slowly advancing, and then also taking their turns back and it seems like this is just gonna wait out for the bleed out and all together and then hoping to somehow make it over the next gate but it is singularity so the odds of that happening are slim to non-existent because Obi can obviously just place on pods and then just see the see him through the camera wait in between and then just stay in the camera and then just spam rotate between the cameras and then just bases bases uh, approach to the exit gate off of what he sees 
Yeah, definitely. Obviously, setting up the cameras right here. Um, maybe a little bit of foreshadowing for the next. You saw Wispy already kind of setting up near Shaq. Uh, and I realized that because Ace is on. Yeah, at this point, I mean, it's it's really difficult to get any any escapes right here because you just force the bleed out into into the uh, um, hatch close, and then and at that point, that's it. Uh, that's exactly what I think. Obi is like, I'm done playing this waiting game. Let me just get my hook. <laughs> And then we'll figure it out from there. We'll go from there. So you know what? Shout out to Obi, the real MVP. Just <laughs> make it, making the, just speeding the game along a little bit right here. Uh, definitely wants to confirm this 4K though for sure. Uh, but at this point, you know, two gens or two survivors left, one gen left. I mean, this is really difficult anyway. So uh, you know, uh, Obi definitely getting rewarded for uh, for all of the work that he's put in in this game so far. It is currently really looking like Obi will be able to match his exact result that he already got in round one, as I've already pointed out at the start of we even lured it into this game as Obi was able to fork him one against the void. And now it all it's also a really nice spot here that he's got the um, the hat right. Literally it could not be closer to the exit gate. So Obi's already controlling one of them. And there's a Dren. And Vistus doesn't have a cam on him. So this might actually, if he's already on that gate, he could get out. Yeah, we did see we did see Ace over there earlier. Oh my god, he's oh already my. on the gate. But no, yeah, not gonna make it. That unfortunately not gonna make it. Yeah, you needed to be right by it, and that's uh, unfortunately not gonna end up uh, not oh, gonna end up working him. out. He didn't see him though, so now Obi has the 50 50. Oh, he's, he might check out the map here. Yeah, and he is going to. This is where he's hiding. This is right where Vistus is. There's no. Oh, he almost missed him, but he but he waved again. <laughs> he's so photogenic, he just can't stop posing. That might have just killed him. <laughs> oh no, that's rather unfortunate right here. Does find them <laughs> though, and now the uh, now the down looks to be inevitable right here. Yeah. Uh, you know this at this point. You know any any extra time you waste is just for your DVD montage reel. Uh, are we gonna see anything like that happen? It looks like we're not. Even with hope though, gonna try to traverse right there. Made a little bit of distance, but the cameras again can close these very, very quickly. He does have the hope and the adrenaline. It's got the the double whammy for all killers when it comes to end games. But as there's no other survivor standing, it's not really going to be much of an advantage. This is us really expecting over to double back late there and go into the tile and just help the corner when an Obi slumbers around. And it is going to be a 4K at one generator remaining that Obi is going to finish this game off on. And now, it really, statistically speaking, Eternum should have this in the bag, considering X9 were not able to, uh, considering X9 were beat by Rapture on the Singularity set, and Eternum were able to get three sub of all four survivors out of the exit gate in their round one with Singularity. Yeah, definitely ending the first half of that. And like you said, uh, the way the cards look for both sides, it looks like maybe Eternum can pull off this victory right here. But before that, maybe we get some predictions. Maybe we get some call outs on some certain interactions right now from our lead analyst today, Rats. What what do you what do you got to say for us today for this match? That was a very solid performance from OB here. Just shutting down the game to one generator. But I also think that X9, whilst they had a tunnel out happen fairly quickly, they still pulled back and secured a win con for for 4K1. That's that can play that, that I can't speak. That Wispy can play <laughs> off, right? Like if they've been 4K on two generators, it would have been really bad for for the win condition for Wispy. But a 4K1 is definitely achievable. Also for Wispy going into this trial now themselves, and. If they definitely, I don't think this is gonna be again a win for for X9. Saying that from a perspective for this set sp particular with this win condition, but they can definitely pay for a tie to repeat the set. I said the same thing for demo already, but this time I actually mean it in the terms of 4K1 kind of being like the average to be expected on a singularity, especially on ping, in my opinion, because that ping uh, that killer is really really strong and. I also think underestimated if in if paid right, if it's in the right hands, it's a really scary killer to verse. Yeah, and what was that again? The result that Wispy was actually to get against Rapture because that's something you still had on your mind. It was a four K as well, right? It was a four K on one generator remaining. Yeah, and exactly, and Rapture was able to get the four K on two. So technically, Wispy and Obi. Have
have so far both got the exact result every single time, but the two of them have had the much better survivor performance. Killer side, however, it is really, really close. If it comes down to this one, I'm just gonna say we're gonna be, be here for a long time. It's gonna be 4k ones all along, and we'll see which team is more consistent in that regard. I hope we don't go into tie, into tie, into tie, into tie, like we had once in the last season of Illusion Monitano with an only set on call. Um, I hope that's not going to repeat itself again. I, I'm excited. I'll be here, even though I, I kind of I'm getting tired slowly, but it'll be fine. No, you're not. <laughs> now, DBD doesn't sleep and neither do you. Exactly. Yeah, I was about to say. I was about to say. You guys are. I see. I see everyone streaming. Like uh, the other day, I saw Laser just like late night stream, and I'm like, I'm in America, like seven o'clock. You have not slept all day. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, you know, the grind is real. So the fact that we still, you know, maybe we keep you just a little bit longer, rats. But no, don't worry. I mean, I'm not really tripping because you know I've been. You know, I've. I am midway through my day, but I know you guys, especially all of all of you, know, you guys on the EU side of things, have been up for quite a minute. Uh, and I know these matches uh, sometimes they get so exciting that we just want to see more and more. But obviously, that does eat away at our energy. However, we are, um, yeah, we're. I'm excited. It's gonna be it's gonna be one for the books. This might be a photo finish, or this might go to yet yeah, a tiebreaker right here. So we're gonna have to see. Um, again, you know, in case this might be the last, uh, the second to last time we get, uh, we get to talk to you rats. Cause obviously if this doesn't go the way of X9 or a turn and we do get a victor, obviously we're going to hear you later today, uh, after the match. But I would just want to say before I forget, like, obviously we appreciate you having around, having you around. You guys are great. I, I like to yell. I like to yap, but you guys bring all the anal analysis, right? Ask comp players, which is really nice to see for sure. So. Thank you. That's what we're here for, baby. What are your predictions, guys? What do you think is going to happen in this trial? What result are we looking at? I don't want to tell you. No, just kidding. Based on what we've seen Eternal pull off in their own Singularity Viva game, I would expect them to do something similar. At least they really only need to get one survivor out of the gate, and it would already be over. On one yeah. gen left, saying like they can get a hatch yeah, escape well. ball yeah, that in, as well. <laughs> on one gen left. But if they get a four kit on two gens and then have somebody escape, that doesn't work because of the wind condition, right? Yeah. So they have to pop the first... five generators. Yeah. So since the first wind condition is 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 um is gen progress, right? So um you know like, I'm not gonna I'm gonna be a little bit biased only because you know it's NA NA. Like I'm rooting for X9. I want to see them kind of climb to the top, but obviously I'll be unbiased as we do call the match. But, you know, I would love to see, you know, Wispy. We've seen performances where Wispy just can, he, when when he's locked in, can be a, like, one of the best DVD players on the planet. And we saw that yeah. against Elysium time and time again during the Hens tournament. I'm excited to see if he can tap into that energy yet again, go Ultra Instinct and bring it home <laughs> for NA to get a faded rematch against Elysium. Because the winner of this does play Elysium next week. So that is going to be, like, a big match to, 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 set, to, to call as well so um all of that is just going to be riding on this result right here so we're going to see what happens uh regardless no matter what the result is the matches have been so fun to, to call today so shout out to mathis as well uh being on the desk with me as well as we get in right back to you yeah right back into the next match the last <laughs> match the second half potentially uh let's get it man yeah we've got to turn him started here on the survivor side against the one and only X9 Wispy, the absolute killer carry for his team. We've only seen Wispy play so far, and on funny enough, on the Eternal side, we already saw three different killers, didn't we? <laughs> it was Vlas, it was Ubi, and then it was Rocket, and the, the Demogorgon set. So we've got yes. some more flexibility with Wispy here, but it really come, it's, it really depends on is it better to have one amazing variety killer or one, one specifically trained for individual killers and wispy is showing off that you really don't need that and variety killers can just as well pop off with extremely early hits on the ability as well and bringing in a different add-on combination this time we still got this soma family photo for the for the haste but the second one that we've got instead now is the spent oxygen tank which is going to make survivors suffer from the exhausted status effect for six, six seconds once they are slipstreamed 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Like you said, maybe bringing a little bit of a different build, a little bit of a different add-on as well. And if oh, I'm not mistaken, <laughs> we also see the Force Hesitation, if yep, I'm not mistaken, yep, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> so that, that's going to be sick right there. Oh my goodness, is that the is that the potentially exhausted right there? Because you saw the jump yep. off the hill. Was that potentially nullifying the BL oh, altogether? No. Is that going to be the down? Oh, it's all about this. Karma goes down on pallet. Ways for, for style points. Is anyone going to be nearby? Shack pallet is one of the most difficult pallets to get a pallet save on because it's inside the structure, right? We must be utilizing the cameras also very smart. Yeah, we see the, the, the body lock. It's impossible to get this pallet save. That is a ridiculously early down. And now with forced hesitation, that tunnel out is going to be ludicrously fast. That add-on, the add-on, the new add-on yeah. that was be brought, yeah. that was that was what nullified the balance landing. That's so yeah. crazy. The value that Wispy's getting off of these add-ons, already getting the first hook. But like you said earlier, just to recap on what you were mentioning, is it better to have one person play killer or have everyone be a specialist? Obviously, it just really depends on how much energy, how much you got in the tank. Obviously, X9 has one of the smallest rosters. I think they only have five players on the roster. Yep, exactly. uh, while, while Eternum have a rather Nine. large roster. Nine. Yeah, they have, they have a larger roster, so definitely that variety is definitely nice to see uh, at the very least. But obviously, Wispy, one of the grinders, you know, Again, like we talked about, playing killer, playing survivor for every set. And here he comes, not wanting to be denied a victory right here over uh, Aeternum. Gonna have to get this hit onto Karma. Oh. Are you gonna make it? I think you are gonna make it. Yep. That's gonna be two stages at five gen. You know, Wispy's making me swallow my words right now. This is much better place than what we saw with Obi's game in the previous trial. And usually we, we've already seen extremely good survivor performances by a tournament, but it doesn't seem like Wispy is going to allow that under any circumstance. Absolutely not going to allow it right there. And we see the basement, if I'm not mistaken, right there, but we don't see Wispy go for the basement, mainly because you, you know, it takes a little bit of time to go down there, come back up. Maybe you want to save a little bit of time, uh, especially because Karma's on second hook already, that you're not really looking to just leave Karma to die on hook. You're looking to at least get already, start the pressure up immediately <laughs> right there. Gonna stealth out, but the cameras are watching the paparazzi coming in clutch <laughs> you know i just love it whenever you see a survivor trying to stealth in the corner thinking oh yeah i'm out of the field of view here right and then you just see the bot poking out <laughs> exactly what we saw like <laughs> that's beautiful yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, that's uh, honestly so, like, I feel like once we see uh, more months and more months pass by of people playing against Singularity, we're going to see the counterplays on, you know, on where the cameras are, maybe being a little bit more consistent on where uh, the mm -hmm. camera placements are as well. But definitely uh, that little bit of surprise element can be everything right here. We do see two, three survivors all on different generators right here, and they're very content on just letting Karma uh, sacrifice bye themselves bye. to the entity. So it's going to have to be a result of can you create enough pressure because now you oh, everyone's on fresh hook but you do have those three pain resident stacks so kind of nullifying the force hesitation uh just in general because no one's trading right this is a rinse and repeat of the scenarios that we've seen in most of the previous games it's always the 3v1 and then it's the pain res pop coming in that is exactly what we're seeing once again with wispy with them however Avoiding or leaving a Karma left to die on the hook, that's going to de easily be three different three survivors pressuring individual generators. So they might have quite a lot of pressure on these. It really depends on how quickly this next generator pops, because then will they be able to, uh, to double the generator that Dia Soleil was on? The survivor that is currently in chase, also great team working with Thunder running over the EMP and getting rid of the port off the back of our of our dear Soleil. Playing the Adam, trying to make it around Water Tower, but the cameras are watching as we pointed out. And oh yeah, that's not going to help at all. The stun there are no stuns will come through if you slip not teleport onto a survivor. Will the ape oh he's not gonna go for this panel drop either? That is extremely risky. But it all comes down to the chance knowledge here by Soleil. Will he be able to hold the correct corners? Beautiful. Leaves it at the exact right moment, but then sadly runs right back into his feet. And Wait, what are you doing, what? Harold? What? No! What? What? That wasn't even happening, was it? What happened? No, that, no, that wasn't. <laughs> just maybe maybe a bit of a block. I'm not really too sure what happened right there. But we are at one generator left. So what? that is where it comes down to. Can you confirm this last generator? You have access 
to three pain reses and you have top goes the weasel but are you going to be able to do it or can these survivors do it and maybe karma's death was a blessing in disguise because it allowed him to create yeah. all this pressure for wispy and now wispy has to play perfectly right here in order to just you know send this to a tie now it has to obviously you know if it if they finish the last gen that's that's it for them so you, you know it's going to be losers bracket time for x9 so we're gonna have to see what the plays are going to be here from wispy yeah, well, it's the peers and it's going to ruin the personal best speedrun requisite which was trying to go for. Didn't manipulate the RNG quite well enough and got a wild encounter in the tall grass. But yeah, Wispy is... I, yeah, I, this is looking at Jimmy's approach right now after they've been able to get uh, Soleil out of that sticky situation in the corner. But where is the last level on the... Why is no one on the gen? No one's on the gen? No one... No one is, is doing... No one is doing motor! What is going on? But <laughs> no maybe we we'll get him. <laughs> no one's on the engine, no one's chugging along, but we are going to see <laughs> we are going to see this rotation potentially right here. So that potentially could be something uh, as to why. Uh, maybe they're setting up in a way. Maybe they're also calling out cameras too, because it's really important to know that, right? That way that because that's a that's a counter looping strategy as well that you have to you have to have ready, especially against someone uh, as as talented as Wispy on the singularity. And now checking corners, maybe, uh, maybe thinking a survivor was a Round and maybe they went to stealth out that way they can get back on this generator immediately so uh potentially a reset onto thunder right here since uh the, clearly no one's on this side of the map right now oh we see someone cross right there though what it's gonna be oh that that two survivors oh that absolutely was that was silly and deciding by the same rock i feel like they could have already won this game because we had two survivors the chase earlier for a very long time as they had a phenomenal chase and that third survivor what was she doing in the meantime that is still quite cool to me maybe also setting up for an emp and then they were just gonna rotate who's gonna take it or help for the chase right and couldn't really find one this is quite questionable now what they're doing with the fence they only need to put one more and it's already the win yeah, already the win right here, but are we are going to find this M1 right now on Tassili. Going to get the window vault right there. Can you close this out? Wispy was trying to get potentially, uh, you know, the teleport right there, right behind him, but not going to able to get it. Going to have to let him go and go back and patrol these generators because this is the win condition now. And you hear some progression right here. And again, can you find, can you find the pod right there? Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff. And that was a really cute attempt using the box in the corner. Oh, Wispy with a very ambitious swing here. Was expecting spits. You know, if I was in that situation, I would have also gone for the vault. Oh, beautiful fake here. And then goes for the vault right after. Should be able to make it around as well. Yeah, he's easily going to get the third vault here. And then doesn't have the pallet left. Oh, did that even block? I don't think it did. Yeah, and that's why Wispy's just going to leave. Did yeah, the shift, a shift tech that perfectly and is not going to block the window just yet. Could have gone for the fourth one. Yeah, unfortunately, the overclock not really working uh, the way that the way they wanted the overclock timer running out right before the window vault. I think if he still had the overclock and he got the window vault, maybe he would have committed to the hit. But at this point, like you said, gonna opt to drop it and go and again continue to patrol the generators because that's the that's the key word at the end of the day is uh, gen defense. If you can get that, you potentially could force this into a tie. But if you don't, you are going to drop into losers match, uh, losers bracket and get denied your run back against uh, Elysium. So uh, there's a lot riding on this scenario right here this is a situation where you know who's going to break first who's gonna which defense is going to crack is it gonna be wispy or is it gonna be the survivors right here on a turn -up? they've been doing such a good job so far creating a ton of pressure can they capitalize though on on this uh this slow down uh region situation right yeah that's one thing that i was going to mention as well we love the regions and this is exactly what we're set up with. And I can imagine Allison Wilders uh, choosing a very cautious approach to these generators, all due to this add-on that Wispy is utilizing, the one that I've already uh, talked about at the beginning, the spent oxygen tank, tank that just applies exhaustion every time uh, one of these survivors is slipstreamed. So they're practically always exhausted. This is even stronger than Minecraft at this point. Absolutely. Obviously, Mindbreaker, you know, only affected uh, once you're on a generator, but having the add-on here, using your power and getting rewarded with a Mindbreaker-esque effect is really, really powerful right here. But the drop and just holds W after, there not going to be able to get it. This is a situation where you have to check the gens because if they're if they're if they are too far progressed, then obviously you have to teleport. But obviously, I think the gen progression was actually fine. So if you can find a scourge right here, you're gonna hit these survivors with a pain res. Personally, I feel like this is where it's game over. Wispy has just acquired the very first stage 
of the last three remaining survivors and none of these generators has even made it past 50 now. They are being extremely careful and that might have just backfired because not a single one of these generators is as far progressed as they really should be throughout the trial. And Wispy will now be able to snowball with pop and pain resonance as none of these survivors have yet donated a single pain resonance hook and now we see the pop and that generator's progress has just been completely nullified. Yeah, absolutely. Complete nullified right here. Not going to commit to uh, to the hit right there. Just going to opt to go for the teleport right here on overclock, but still not able to get anything right here. Uh, honestly, this uh, this exhaustion add-on at such a good uh, such good patience from Wispy. Not swinging uh, a little bit too early, but man, this is uh, yeah. You see the teleport right here. Maybe trying to do a gen right here. You got to be really careful though. Are you still around though? To be honest, I didn't even know that exhaustion out existed before this map, so I'm really glad Wispy is showing it off. That's everyone's extremely risky by Yeah, everyone's probably a bit flabbergasted by this. Yeah, but everyone's, flabber <laughs> everyone's flabbergasted, and we're going to see maybe a surge of, of people running this add-on for sure, because, I mean, think about it. Like, getting rid of, even oh. though you are on overclock mode, getting rid of all of the exhaustion perks that are available uh, to uh, to you against the singularity, getting rid of all of them just feels like it's a no-brainer, right? Uh, Karma was already discombobulated by our, by our dear Whiskey at the start of the trial as we saw the attempt to drop down with balanced landing, but it did not work out whatsoever. And we see Dunder is going to be... Uh, it's, it's really difficult to make out with these, uh, with these generators as well because they're, they're all in a corner, respectively. So it's really difficult once these survivors actually decided... Oh, oh Luke! Oh! <laughs> that was amazing! <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. Gonna get the down right here. And again, like you mentioned earlier, these generators have not progressed in a way that until just now, this gen does, does have some, a bit of progress on here. But, you know, again, this is just gonna be like the war of attrition here. Can you outlast these survivors and just get this down right here? Get these hooks? Yeah, that's we'll have to see how long... Yeah, it is. We'll have to see if how long this game lasts. It feels like now what the survivors are trying to do is just outlast the pain resonance. Have everyone hooked once, and we'll get them all out, unhook them, get them healed, and then, only then do we try to attack the screen then once more. Because this is starting to get really, really difficult for our survivors of Team Turnham, as Spitz is now also on the hook. You know, I'm just going to blame Daimao for not playing, that's why they're in this situation. <laughs> yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I feel like uh, the, when I watched uh, when I watched uh, si um, the Singularity play between X9 and uh, Elysium, it was kind of the War of Attrition like here as well, and Wispy was yeah. able to just play well enough for long enough, right, to in order to just secure this uh, this uh, the the kills, secure the win, and now potentially securing the tie to go to a just a rematch of this matchup right here with the Singularity. But obviously, you know, you're gonna have to find. Yeah, you see the EMP being broken right here and you see them you know agreeing to just reset right here potentially to get the save and it seems like they are going to leave spits behind on the hook but i believe the moment this is turning into a tv1 that will be the point at which they cannot further progress any of these generators and with how long this game is going on for and you know you keep making the references to the war of attrition this uh, this is not groaning souls to anymore this might as well just be called for dawn with how long this battle is going on for yeah, absolutely for sure. So this is uh yeah, you saw that quick uh that quick heal right there with the resilience getting a little yep. bit of value off of that and the EMP able to at least recover a little bit uh with the exhaustion. But can you find something right here? You're oh, just gonna get tagged rematch. yet again. You just get tagged again, it doesn't matter. Like that's how strong this add-on is because now you can't commit to these window vaults even when uh you know, let's say it's overclock mode and you have life, but if you're exhausted it doesn't even matter, so that's probably going to be the kill onto on the sacrifice onto Spitz, unless Silly can get there fast enough. But that timer is very low. You know, we've heard of how popular tiebreakers have become. We've decided over DVD League to introduce tiebreaker too, and that's exactly what this is most likely going to end up with. With Spitz now dying on hook, both survivors injured once more. Dunder also still affected by the by the pod or slipstream. I don't. Yeah, this is going to be the exact same result Be against all odds, despite the tournament's extreme dominance performance on the survivor side in round number one but whiskey was also able to get the 4k on one 
So we are just going to see a rinse and repeat of the survivor, of these killer results over and over with the singularity. And it seems like not even a turn strong survivor side that we've already seen proven themselves in round one was able to overcome Wispy's deadly singularity. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, Wispy just was able to hang on long enough, saw the gens getting slammed while they decided to let Karma die on hook, but was able, you know, was saying no, no force hesitation value, no trades, no problem, able to just power through and keep up with this energy as well, which is something to note for sure. And now is in a really favorable situation uh, in this 2v1. But you saw the, you saw the, the different animation, right? The kind of it's like a two week old animation when you damage the generator enough times like it, it, it kind of claws up now so uh you know that's something to know also but at this point in the 2v1 it's uh it's pretty difficult to uh, you know to say that they're gonna actually get this last gen done you know this is also amazing we both signed up for games that last from if we're going by CET time, that go from 20 or military time CET that go from 8 to 11 or 20 to 23 <laughs> we're currently at <laughs> 0.30 we're, we're going way past two hours with this one considering this is 100% turning into a second tiebreaker. <laughs> yeah, Maybe everybody's like... brought enough popcorn for this because we're in for another ride after this one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we're, we're going to try to power through these matches quickly, uh, even well, though it is going energy. to the tiebreaker. But yeah, I got the energy. I'm super hyped. You know, oh, yeah. again, Again, I said I wasn't going to be biased, but I was really rooting for NA, and so I'm hyped. <laughs> you know, every, I know a lot of people would be like, man, it's getting late, but you know, I'm happy that we're all here just enjoying some DVD. Let's get that tag onto Dunder, though. Are we going to be able uh, to get this uh, to get this teleport right here? Know the EMP coming in clutch right here. Yeah, just going to reset the pods right here. Can you find something here, though? Maybe getting a down, maybe getting a hit right here. Gonna just W key down to that other side of the map uh, where there are no generators, so. You know, it's actually perfectly balanced. You're biased for the re for the region, and I'm biased for by the fact that this Eternal Rust is half my friend group. <laughs> yeah, there we Sorry, go. No, it checks out, it checks out, yeah. So, <laughs> it's good that we've got a cast off on each side, right? Yeah, shout to, shout to the staff. <laughs> the staff shout scheduled us perfectly. We love it. They, it, it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> yeah, Wispy is really, it should just try to commit to get one of these down here, which is, oh, oh, almost got a corner attack there by Dunder. He is going to bite the dust and Sile is never going to be able to get. This is also something that I found a bit weird with Obi's approach, because what Wispy is doing right now is he's switching from camera to camera while staying in the camera, right? But what Obi did is he went into camera, then left it, like walked a couple steps forward, went to different camera, but Wispy was just swapping between them. Yeah, Dunder is going to be hooked and now, and, well, I mean, if Sile manages to get out of the gate, it would be the win, right? But chances of those are very low. Yeah, chances, yeah chances are very low in a 1v1. Uh, still have a lot of hooks to give away. I'm pretty sure uh, this is Dunder on fresh hook. Yeah, that's right. So there's plenty of time, right, uh, in order to, to find yeah. Sile and get this, and get this, uh, get this down comp confirmed. So, uh, man, it was, it's crazy. It looked really bad. Like, like. 10 minutes ago, this looked really bad low-key, and now, here we are. That's kind of crazy to think about. I I, I don't think anyone's going to come back, or Sile in this case is going to come back for Dundive, similar to the scenario that we also had in the previous game. Also, I just realized, look at the gate on me. <laughs> oh, again, <laughs> right? Look familiar, doesn't that look familiar? <laughs> is, isn't this the exact same layout as yeah. last game? Yeah. That's actually crazy. That's so That's unlucky. Rude, <laughs> oh, uh, well, it's, it's good, to, good, to realize, good to see that GBG has finally come forward and introduced seeding to the maps. <laughs> So, yeah. oh, actually, is it? Oh, it's not. I don't think it's the. Oh, yeah, it's actually. So this time, Sha Shaq is rotated 180 degrees. So Hatch is now on the opposite side. Because last time we had Hatch five meters on the gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because Hatch spawns on the side where there yeah, is yeah. no. There's no window, right? So no entrance there. Yeah, that's that's crazy. So <laughs> that's uh that's a little bit unlucky, but you know what? It's all good. Um, you know, yeah, we are going to you know find this immediate um this immediate close onto the hatch as soon as uh Dunder goes down. Um, but yeah, again, it's been it's been so. We've been chugging along, not a whole lot to say, obviously because it's just been uh, exceptional defense right there from Wispy, not able to actually uh, capitalize on the fact that they created so much pressure to put uh, Wispy at one generator left with three survivors remaining, and now here we are. Wispy ended up just, you know, grinding his way oh, back. Oh, oh no. Oh, found him. That might have, oh, okay, go. 
Sunday yeah. is able to get this gate open in time. Where is Wake Up when you need it? But still, it doesn't matter since it's already been affected by the pod and Wispy will just be able to teleport right on over. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got a tie in the tiebreaker. So we've got a tie in the tiebreaker. Tiebreaker tie version two. You know, we've you're faster than Minecraft. You know, Minecraft's so popular. Why is there Minecraft two yet? Oh, we've got tiebreaker two for you. You know how much you love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, tie, tiebreaker two, electric boogaloo. We're we're ready. We're ready to get it going right here, man. That was a that was a long that was a long and full of patience uh, game right there. From Wispy was able to clutch it out. Uh, look, there's probably so many nuances behind uh, you know the strats and whatnot. So obviously, you know, my man Rats, we got an, at least two more analysis moments that we have uh, actually three more because we have to replay the set but what was one of the key differences because it feels like there was a ton of pressure early on then at the end it just it just slowed down and slowed down what 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 might have happened i mean i definitely think what they spent oxygen tank that made quite a big difference in the early game because it did catch down some of guard we saw the karma quite evidently as he tried using balance downing to jump off the hill and didn't have access to it but yeah, I already see rats unmuting, so what's your third perspective on this? We need to hear another voice on it, because these games, from from my perspective at least, looked very similar. They definitely were very similar to each other, that's for sure. It's, I think, the, the most, the biggest issue for both teams were that the tunnel out wasn't necessarily able to use many resources. Um... We have seen after the first tunnel out in this game particularly that people just kept pre-dropping all those pallets, which, which I mean, sure, the Singularity might shred through them with the overclock mode, right? But that still buys a lot of time. And we have seen people, on, after the tunnel out happened on this game, we have seen people run in for EMPs to delay with that um, overclock mode, so that, to delay the, the, the chase, because Wispy had to, again, shoot another pot to then tag them again with the with the pot. Um, that bought a lot of time, but that also cost a lot of gen efficiency because you had people rotating all around, grabbing an EMP, going towards the chase, using that EMP, going back towards um, the generator. And I think the tunnel out happened on three generators remaining, and then they had that very long process where with people shredding through all the pallets on the entire map, whilst nobody was taking many hits or down, like any downs, but also barely any hits. And they popped two more generators, which was good. It's just there was one more to go. And therefore, I think if they've been able to utilize all these resources that they, that they had on the first chase instead of the, the tunnel after the tunnel out, they would have been in a much better position to um, get escapes, right? Which they haven't, which is really unfortunate for them. Yeah, throughout the trial, it really looked like they were easily going to get the last gen popped. But for some reason, they just slowed down the gen pressure completely, or basically seized. What we saw, we saw Sinai with a really long chase, an unusually long chase, and already one survivor as well nearby to help support with an EMP. And then the third survivor just didn't do anything. I guess this is now the second chance for our survivors to correct their mistakes and hopefully pull through an overhauled game plan, new approach perchance. And yeah, we're off to go into tiebreaker 2 after the first tiebreaker was tied. We've already seen this in the past also with like, uh, for example, the Cold Tower Nurse that we've seen in the past, where the expected result with the balancing that we have had back then was a 4k1. And then we've had tiebreakers where we just kept playing the set because until one team basically does a mistake. We just keep replaying it until one team, either on killer, doesn't get the 4k1 or on survivor, um, jukes the killer for a little bit longer to get five gens done, right? So mm -hmm. it's more about the consistency. We can see this very similar thing now on the singularity set where it's kind of like the expected result is 4k1. If you get your, if you play your cards right, it's just, um, Unlike a nurse, there's a lot more you can do on surf side. Unlike a nurse where you are kind of like, it's more about if the killer does a mistake. Here it's more about the survivors playing perfectly. If they do, if they have good chases, then they can definitely also out this. Um, it's just which team is more consistent in that regard on both sides to get that result that they need. And until we see this tiebreaker being broken.
Yep, and all our questions will be answered right after we are loading into the game. You know, let, let's get our minds off quickly from this game as we are loading into this game. You know, SSB, there's something I wanted to tell you as well. You know, you're the Super Smash Brothers caster, right, as well? That's so I am, awesome I, in the game. Exactly. I am. So, uh, this is my time to completely disappoint you because, let me tell you, I own a GameCube, I own a Wii, I own a Wii U, I own a Switch, and I have never in my life played Super Smash Brothers. You know that's uh, that's heart that's heart that's heartbreaking. But to be fair, uh, most of the people in the Smash community, I like they they're like, hey, well, so like, what other games do you cast? I'm like, well, I like to cast DBD. Like, I think it's really fun. And they're like, what's DBD? You know what? Fair enough. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, well, it's so, kind of the same thing, but 3D. Yeah, yeah, kind of the same thing, uh, <laughs> with a lot more gore. <laughs> with with a lot more uh, with with a lot more um um you know and a lot um, less Falcon punch. Yeah, a lot less Falcon Punch and more uh, three gens. <laughs> well, three well, gens. You, well, you know, you know, whenever the shape hits tier three and lands and explodes, it that does kind of remind. Yeah, but anyway, true. we are right back into the game. Wispy with the exact same build as previously. We've once again got the spent oxygen tank as well as the Soma family photo. So, plus five percent extra haste during the overclock mode, but that's also going to lessen the. Uh, Shorten the overclock mode by 20% and then spend oxygen attack for the ex not ex I was gonna say exposed, but imagine that. No, for the exhausted status effect every time a survivor is slipstreamed for six seconds. So we are probably going to see that very soon come into effect as Dunder will be the first one in place and doesn't make it to the pallet around without taking it first. And oh look, this time we finally got different RMB, there's no gate nearby. <laughs> Okay, nearby finally, but gonna get the overclock right here, and that's gonna be a cutoff right there. I'm surprised we didn't see the the body block right there. If Spitz was right there, gonna end up, you know, trying to get attack on the Spitz and then maybe going back for the pickup on the Thunder. That's exactly what Wispy's oh. gonna get. Already a lot more pressure this time around than the beginning of last game. Is the turn and finally going to fumble the bag? The first, fourth, first. <laughs> I'm gonna say fourth, first, fourth set into the matchup. Got between X9 and the turn. And we've got much more pressure than Wisp was able to accumulate previously. But also, another generator pop immediately. I'm imagining that the server that just popped the generator will be rotating over to Dunder and pick him up as soon as I say so, also. And Spitz will be the one continuing the chase, and Wispy is going to lose all that early game pressure now, based on the fact that he is con uh, committing to the chase onto Spitz and left Dunder alone. That he's already been reset in the midterm also. Yeah, I feel like low key, this is like too early to call. <laughs> Okay, gets the at least gets the down. I was about to say, if you delay this down for at least another generator, that might be that might be uh, that might have been Curtis because I feel like maybe the pressure was just uh, like there was a lot of pressure right there, and you have to make that decision. But I think maybe you should have gone back and just picked up Ace. But that does take time for someone else to come in and get the reset. So maybe maybe it does work out. But so far right now, um, you know, only one hook after the explosive start from Wispy. Yeah, and that's kind of similar also to what we saw in the Plague uh, game between uh, the previous two teams that we spectated. Oh, my, my mouse stuck on, on a blanket here. Uh, of course, that was between Synapse and Calamity, where we also saw two downs, and that could have already rendered the win for Marco back then. But instead, he decided to slug and overcommit, and his hubris was down down for the same way we're seeing now with Wispy, as he wasn't able to get the pickup onto Dunda, and now instead has to rest they uh, with spits on the. I I really hope that they're going to fix their gen pressure this time, and that we are about to see two gens pop. Yeah, I was about to say two gens popping is gonna be one. Uh, that might be the key to setting up the perfect win con right here because two gens popping can confirm potentially uh, five gens being done as opposed to four K one. Um, so you might you might get four K zero potentially, um, or you can might also get some escapes if you play this well enough. Wispy looking to defend this kill though, but like you said, you know we saw the same kind of performance again uh, as Marco on Plague earlier. Can history repeat itself right here? We're gonna have to see. But does find the overclock right here on to Dunder and does get that hit and get that tag right there so uh great stuff right here can we confirm this down though that's exactly where you're gonna need to do gets the tag also gonna potentially go back to the hook because you know someone's rotating potentially here can you catch them rotating in an uncomfortable position or are you gonna try to look for this ace right here again and no one has come for the rescue onto spitz and dunda was uh, just took the tag in the meantime 
Will anyone actually come for this, or are they just going to split the gens, get two more popped, and then not be stuck in the same three gen? It really seems like that's what, that, exactly what they're doing. Yep, they just popped the three gen also, so this is looking way better now than how it did previously, even if Kale dies on Oak, but I believe Kama died even earlier in the game last time, right? Didn't he carry from three gen Oak remaining, and now it's two. I feel like it was uh, it was like a parish around three generators, but then yeah. two more generators popped very, very quickly also. So it might have felt like you might have died Loki at one generator. I'm actually curious to see what the progress might be looking like uh, on uh, Silly and Karma on those other two gens, but uh, potentially, or if they're doubling up on one. But the, uh, this is now the confirmed kill on the Spitz, and now we're going to have to... Uh, now we get a look on Karma and how much, uh, how much uh, Karma has to bring to the table in terms of looping against uh, this killer right here. Does find the tag onto Thunder and going to opt to go gray awareness from wispy knowing that um you know that chase right down to karma you know you just you just got to think that thunder's going the other way and that's exactly what we're gonna get a body block right here would be amazing but i don't know if we're gonna get it and we're gonna get that down right here on the thunder no if comp had newspaper uh, comp have newspapers then the headline tomorrow would be singularity the new twins 30 minute games make a comeback because uh, Wow, these games are turning into extremely long warfares, as we've already pointed out numerous times, commented on how long, on how slowly, or uh, how slow these approaches are to the game as well. The survivor and the killer side are very, very cautious and careful with their next moves, planning out exactly. And we don't even have a 3-gen here, yet this Wispy is still easily able to hold generators, just utilizing the camo. Tama will also be found in the corner, immediately take the M1 and doesn't make it a bit too safety, but it won't take long until Kama is reinfected by the pod. Yeah, definitely not gonna take a whole long longer, but honestly, I feel like that EMP right there, right before the hit, right before the window was really clutch because it allowed Karma to make a ton of distance and even with the, even getting hit, they actually got the window vault, but were able to at least get the pod away from them. That way they, they don't get targeted immediately after the hit as well. So buying Karma just a little bit of more time. Maybe you see Karma rotating towards that hook potentially to try to rescue Thunder. But again, this does not look this kind of looks like a little similar to, to what's going on what was going on earlier still has two pain rest stacks and again we talked about it earlier like the big thing about pain rest it's a very strong perk altogether but around one generator or two generators pain rest feels like it hits even harder because you can kind of pop that last gen it seems like this is just going to be a rinse and repeat of the result as well i don't see them popping another gen anytime soon and with dunda going down the Osuya, yeah the teleport is going to come through you will barely make it to the next window. But how much further will you really make it? The teleport does barely not come through. Wish we have a really smart camera position, but Thunder barely runs out of perspective. Will they finally be able to pop the last remaining generator? Or they are at least doubling it, so they are making the attempt this time, unlike in the previous trial. We see Silla going or running off with the EMP, trying to deactivate the camera so no one makes it near. But I think Wispy just makes it over on time, just by sheerly walking. And then has the pop goes, and then it's definitely a 4k on one. Or they're just going to commit, which is also... Oh no, thing. they're committing to it! Oh, they're committing so to close. it, it's gonna happen! They popped the last gen! Pop oh. The catharsis right now is unbelievable. They finally popped the last gen. They will both die for it, but this is realistically the best result they could have gone for. This is unbelievable, truly an Aristotelian drama. Finally, our souls are cleansed as last generator pops. We finally see all five generators pop in a singularity game. And it all comes down to what Obi can pull off in the upcoming game. Yeah, our our conversations from earlier, uh, you know, you got to think that this is a very, very, very unlikely result to tie. Like, you either are going to absolutely destroy Obi, which also seems very unlikely for sure because Obi is so talented, or you're going to, you know, you're going to see 4K to 4K1 potentially, but 4K0 is definitely feels like it's very, very, very difficult to match. But man, what a performance from these survivors. You know, the war of attrition running on significantly less energy because of the time zone difference and yet they still come out here and prove to have an even better result than the first one so i mean what a what a way to end it that commitment that resilience value was everything for sure uh, i believe it was uh, karma with the resilience as well so that actually proved to to help just a little bit as well you know that 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 nine percent adds up for sure so you know only goes to med school so it just checks out that he plays a killer that's keen on experimenting with people <laughs> 
you know <laughs> you know it really be like that sometimes but hey but i will say um you know i'm sure uh, i'm sure rats has a lot of things to talk about with us right now we might be able to uh get them in right now and have a little quick discussion uh rats what do you think man this uh this looks real this looks like it's gonna be really difficult to tie what do you think that's for sure. Difficult to tie is uh, one say one way to say this. Uh, how this result turn out, right? Um, I mean, yeah, that that's a really good uh, way to to phrase it. It's a really, I mean, considering that what we've seen in the first trial, this is probably the best result that they could have hoped for, right? Like a 4K zero. Um, I believe for Wispy it's kind of like unfortunate because for that early game if it wasn't for the slug Like the false hesitation value like the free hit was definitely worth it But then if Wispy instead would head back to the pickup and picks up ace and hooks him That first hook would have been much sooner that camp out would have happened much sooner and therefore The pressure in the 3 versus 1 would have been applied also a lot sooner um, and if it wasn't for the if it wasn't for that, I believe Wispy could have also still secured the 4k and one generator again. But I also think it's kind of like Wispy was a little bit impatient this game with the commitment on Ace. Um, it was the generator pop really like it was really close with the pop on the generator for sure. But Wispy had everybody injured, and he could have definitely played a lot more hit and one style, bait people out and chase p people off the generators, force on the pallets, and essentially regress the generator to commit until, like, to assure that they don't pop it when he commits. So, the generator wouldn't, shouldn't have necessarily popped if uh, played properly, but I guess a little bit impatience, and I don't blame him, it's, it's getting late slowly, but surely and people want to wanna head out, right? But, <laughs> um, definitely a, still a good result. It's a 4k either way, but x will definitely have to pop all, all the generators themselves now. Yeah, and you know, on that note, as you're pointing out that everyone that is getting late as well, why don't we just, well, I'm going to just proclaim a short break here. We're going to go in quick permission until we lo load into this probably really final match. Now, thank you very much, Rats, for your penultimate input on these, on these games. There's still going to be one more round of discussion once this probably final game will be played out. We'll be back after a very short break with Obi on the Singularity, representing Team Eternum one last time against the Survivor side of X9. Stay tuned, everybody. Welcome back, everyone. We hope you uh, you've enjoyed the short little break that we had while we had this uh, the match set up for the second half of this tiebreaker uh, rematch on the singularity and it's very simple obi has to match wispy's performance at the very least or perform even better at 4k zero gens now so this is going to be one for the books for sure it's going to be a photo finish both teams not willing to give this up who's it going to be Mathis, it's going to be uh definitely one of the craziest finishes for sure that is my name, absolutely. This is a two-hour standoff already between these two teams, and probably even longer since we've gone to the second tiebreaker now. And this is overall match number eight between these two teams. And of course, it's the last one of the day as well to really keep us on our toes. So this is unbelievable. Obi was a very early down onto a uh, hit, not uh, not the down just yet, or maybe I was doing something wrong. Well, but he's about to get the down. No, risk with a phenomenal vault right back into where Obi teleported from is not going to go down just yet. Obi whiffs of the ability to teleport as well, but gets the grab. Get over here! And he's going to be able to get this right out of the window and make it a bit faster since the animation of grabbing someone is much faster than downing and picking up and carrying to the hook. And in this case, Obi was already positioned right next to the hook and also right next to a score hook is even faster than what was than what was than what Risky was able to do in the previous game. Yeah, this looks uh this looks honestly that is uh the start that Obi needed. That's the start that Eternum needs in order to uh, you know even better this uh this result right here. So um that's gonna be an immediate down onto Wispy and like you said uh, already a scourge uh, delaying that first gem pop can be everything honestly so uh it sets up the tempo of the match because obviously 
uh, you know, if you're not applying that pressure, then, you know, the killer's just having a field day right now. Gets a little bit of time to kind of check the camera, set up shop a little bit, and Obi looks like he's very adamant on letting that first gen go, but also going to uh, try to confirm the second kill, uh, and while oh. right now Hans is getting ready for this save. Oh, I don't get it. That's unbelievable. Haunt was able to pixel perfectly a rescue Wispy from Burks before the second stage comes through. And what does that mean? Obi just wasted that entire minute camping Wispy to second stage because he didn't even get it. At least it's going to be a second pain rest right after the first generator pops. So that is even more unfortunate. Now X9, extremely lucky we're able to get that barely based out per perfectly timed on the second on the dot. And Obi is going to have his his uh, pace slowed down tremendously that he came into with in this game and he had the setup here very early for a potential kill even at three generators remaining oh that's really nice read here by Obi as well expecting wispy to go back into this and a really nice follow-up camera but it was barely not enough wispy was already too quickly around the corner and we will not be able to get this in time managed to get the pop here on the very far progress generator over that's a very clutch pop right there that gen that gen was chugging for sure. So honestly, that was honest. That was honestly probably the best case scenario right there for Obi to rotate towards the second generator that could have been popped potentially right here. Gonna opt to get the win the loop right there. Yep, cuts uh, cuts off haunt right there with the camera. Can you get this TP right here? Does have the pallet access right here, so uh, even in overclock mode can get it. You see Ace right there getting ready for the setup. That might have been Ace with the EMP right there denying Obi with the uh, with um the the overclock right there. He manages to get the slipstream regardless extremely quickly. Is the wolf gonna come through? Nobody manages to get the down regardless. So a second survivor nearby, so Obi might be trying to slip pressure yet. But we've seen it oh too well with what happens once you leave a survivor slump on the ground. <laughs> so Obi in this case is just going to 180 right back to Bond and claim the hook. This is going to be the third individual stage of the trial and hopefully for Obi another pain rest before the generator pops. Yeah, gonna get the hook right here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was uh, un unfortunately that's uh, not a third oh, unique yeah, hook. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hong was actually down earlier because of that trade, right? Uh, but regardless, Wispy right here sitting on the gen, making sure there's a lot of adequate pressure being applied. That gen number two is about to pop any second now. Right here gets the pop value though. Can you get the save? And there is generator number two popping. They're already rotating to try to get this rescue, but uh, can Obi cut them off is going to be the million dollar question right here. Haunt, second stage, already in the struggle phase. Don't want to lose a survivor at this point in time. Yo, I recommend you to look at the three of them that my man has right here. Wait, is this... There's no way. They, no. He got the exact... Listen, he's got the exact same RNG once again that they already had in the first set. The three gen right here, Shaq right next to the exit gate. There is just no way. Are we playing off seeds? <laughs> Genuinely. Oh. Are you seeing this? That's, that's actually so unlucky that's right really here, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Turned around immediately and just said, wait oh. one second. Oh, oh my god, that, that down was actually kind of crazy. Yeah, my, my, my guy was going for the window turkey, but Obi saw it coming and immediately 180 for lunge. And this is Wispy's exact setup. He had this 3 gen. He had the shack window at the gate. This is really weird to look at. This is like we're actually such a deja vu. It must be also for Obi because he's now playing on his RNG essentially what he had as well. But in Wisp game, Team Eternum were actually able to pop the corner gen that Obi still has available. So he still has the hook right inside of this three gen. And this gen is also zero. About to be at least with, with uh, the regression after Pain Rose, that's it. Oh my goodness. This is, uh, yeah, this is crazy. I mean, this, this looks exactly like you said. Uh, very very similar layout as the earlier but you know this is gonna be so difficult to deal with right now wispy though being down gets stunned right there great stuff right here can you find something here wispy ending up going for uh the the hit right there no one home for it though also we didn't talk about this earlier but we don't see that we don't see the add-on that wispy brought the exhausted add-on we see yeah. um we see only two different add-ons that affect uh, um the overclock duration right Exactly. Wispy keeps opting to... Oh, not Wispy. Obi keeps opting to go with this add-on that essentially removes the side effect 
off the purple one. Because the purple add-on gives you haste whenever you split stream, yes. Or whenever you're overclocked. But it also reduces the duration of the other by 20%. And the, uh, the brown add-on that Obi has boosts it by 15%. So there's only a 5% difference in total since DPD works, or the add-ons at least, or perks also work additively. Maybe also is gonna launch straight through the pallet, gets it onto Vistress, and they're all healed up again. And he doesn't have a tunnel out. Yeah, no tunnel out ready immediately right there. So gonna have to opt to go for uh, just a slowly but surely pressure. The War of Attrition is gonna be real. You saw that camera, you saw that light up, right? The pod light up. You know he was probably checking cameras. So I'm surprised that we didn't see uh, the teleport right there. Maybe the EMP was up, I'm not really too sure. But we are going to get, uh, wait, is this where Ace was? I, yeah, this is why a different survivor was on the far oh. corner generator. It is going to be Jar, the only survivor not carrying the team tag. Manages to get the, with the win, the 50-50, that's quite big. So they will be forced to reset these uh, these pods as well if he, is, if he wants to get any pressure here. But it seems like he's taking way too long on these chases and they might just pop this and very, very soon. Yeah, if they can get this three gem pop, that'll be everything for sure. But we have seen the defense from both of these killers playing Singularity, both Obi uh, oh. and um, oh my God, is that? Ooh, okay. <laughs> Trying to get the oh, window tech. Pull me once, shame on you. Pull me twice. No, not gonna happen this time around. So. Is it pull me once, shame on me. Pull me twice. Shame on you. <laughs> shame on me <laughs> also, honestly. Shame on everyone, honestly. Yeah. At this point, yeah, so. you got it. <laughs> Yeah, this is looking like a flying will be able to pop this den, these dens. Yep, there we go. That's one den left from the whip. Oh yeah, wait, actually, four people still standing. This is the first time we've got four survivors into late game. So this might just, yeah, Wiz Obi keeps going for these extremely risky lunders as well. I don't think anything's stopping x from winning this now. Oh my They're all god. They're all healed up. No one's tagged right now until Wispy got tagged just now. And again, only one pain rest stack left. At this point in time earlier, we would see maybe two or three different pain reses left at one gen. And we know how much that can hurt, especially because we weren't pressuring gens together. They were splitting gens. And now at this point though, it still only has one. Obviously you still have pops, so you can make it, uh, you can make Five, it work somehow, four, but this looks three, really close. Five, and there's the pop right there and Oh my god. I really wanted to time it down. I was thinking I was contemplating in my head. Am I gonna start off what by from three or am I gonna start off by from five? I decided to go with five, but if I had gone with three, I would have been spot on. So I'm, I'm a bit mad now. But anyway, last gen pop, Obi has not a single late game perk left available. And this looks like x is just going to clean four mana stages. Only four stages off the board. The gates are opened. There's only a single survivor injured. Obi's facing down two healthy survivors that are both easily going to make it to the exit gate as Haunt tries to distract Obi from making it to the exit gate. Also, gets the pallets done and there's nothing in the way of four of our four survivors escaping through the exit gate. Four stages, four men out. Almost as good as a tournament's performance on the survival side in round number one. But it all matters what comes down here. Wisp with a 4k on zero generators remaining. And their survival side with a four-man escape. An absolutely brutal result considering the stats that we spectated so far. Man, it was neck and neck the entire time. But X9, the explosiveness that this new team has available for everyone. They are taking names, taking sets, taking killers. And man, it was just the fact that we were in a situation where, like, it was it was a 4K zero was really hard to tie. It was either you were going to, you know, it was going to be one way or the other, right? But man, that was a... Uh, a very coordinated plays, uh, rather unlucky situation uh, for the killer right there. But X9 is going to take the War of Attrition over a Turnum and it has themselves set on a date with Elysium next week. But man, we got one more person back in here with us, Rats. That was a that was like it felt like the pace of the game was way faster, and we didn't get to see the singularity slow things down a little bit this time around. What do you think, though? Yes, you are right, but I, there was there was still something that I want to touch on here because the the, um, the way that x played this game was at the end very slow, but in the beginning it was very aggressive, getting those unhooks that um, Eternum didn't, 
And the difference here is that X9 might show that if Obi was to commit for a tunnel out, that he would get punished for it. They went into main building, and if he was going to commit to Wispy, I think Wispy was the first tunnel out if I remember correctly, if he was going to commit to that first chase that he had there after the hook trade came in, um, he would have eaten basically an EMP or two, and then the chase would have, been, would have been so long, and the death location would have been in a position where he couldn't have even been able to proxy cap the hook because it would have been so far away from the generators, that if he was to commit for that tunnel out that he really needed, he would have just lost the game either way, that way. Which, then he decided to take the hook and play off pressure and get somebody else tunneled out, which also didn't work out the way that he intended, and then x slowed down their game pace, made sure that everybody was reset, and they tackled the 3 gen together as a 4-man stack, which, as you could tell, even if Obi was going to commit at some point, which he had to and he didn't, if he, even if he was to commit for something, he was going to lose that 3 gen, simply because it was still a 4 versus 1. And that's the key moment and the difference between this game and the last game that we've seen, in my opinion, that made the difference and in them outing this game and not getting themselves 4 would again. Yeah, four, four, 4 singularity matches and only one of them had 4 survivors remaining at 1 gen and that was everything for sure, like you said. And also, just again, the aggressive, altruistic plays that X9 have, have shown us this entire set kind of proved to actually work out. Again, high risk, high reward. We talked about it earlier, man. But man, what a way to finish it out. Mathis, that was, uh, that was one for the books for sure. Oh, absolutely, man. If anyone still remembers those old, old Mr. Beast thumbnails when he was still under 10 million subs and did videos like... Uh, saying subscribe to PewDiePie for 24 hours or something like that. And if you remember his face on the thumbnails, yeah, that's me right now. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're all, we're all there. The classic, I, I'm so surprised the, to, to see it. Well, not surprised, but and more so like, it just like felt like it, it was a, it was a completely like different change of pace, man. And it was, it was so cool to watch. So, but man, th this, had, this was going on for quite a long time and X9 uh, managed to fight their way through and ended up uh, advancing on to the next round. We will see a turnum in losers bracket later, oh, yeah. uh, later next week as well. I will say this is so unfortunate X9 uh, and a, a turnum, the loser has to play Ariando in loser's racket next yep. week.